Good morning, sahabat Erlangga. Hi everyone. I would like to say welcome to Grand Final National Erlangga English Speech Contest 2023. How are you everybody? How are you? Everything's good? Okay, and now before we start our contest, and I would like to say welcome to the, all the participants, to all the judges, welcome Mr. Lee Norman Smith as a teacher of an international school in Jakarta. I would like to say welcome to Mrs. Amber Victoria as an English teacher of a language course in Jakarta. And also Kak Naila Farhana as an English content creator or influencer. Hello Kak. And I would like to say welcome to Erlangga Directors Representative who will open the event. Mrs. Fikri Somya Dewi as the Assistant Managing Director Penerbit Erlangga. Hello Mrs. Fikri. And also I would like to say welcome to Sahabat Erlangga who attend here this morning and also Sahabat Erlangga watching the Grand Final Live on YouTube Erlangga Inspirasi Channel. Baik teman-teman semua, adik-adik yang saya sayangi, Erlangga English Speech Contest merupakan kegiatan atau lomba tahunan penerbit Erlangga yang sudah diselenggarakan sejak tahun 2012 yang menjadi wadah anak-anak Indonesia untuk mengembangkan bakat dan keterampilan dalam berkomunikasi bahasa Inggris. Dan di tahun 2023 ini, Erlangga English Speech Contest hadir sebagai bentuk dukungan atas program pemerintah untuk terus memberikan program atau kegiatan bermanfaat bagi anak-anak di Indonesia. Sehingga mereka tetap semangat untuk berkreasi dan berkarya demi Indonesia maju berkreasi. Lomba ini sangat diminati oleh siswa dan juga siswi dari seluruh Indonesia dengan total peserta yang mendaftar mencapai kurang lebih 7.000 peserta. Wuh. Mulai dari jenjang SD, MI atau SMP, MTS, SMA, MA, dan SMK, MAK di seluruh Indonesia. And now, before we start our Grand Final National Erlangga English Speech Contest 2023, I would like to invite Mrs. Fikri Somya Dewi as the Assistant Managing Director Penerbit Erlangga to come up on the stage to give up a speech. The one and only Mrs. Fikri. Please give applause. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Shalom, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebajikan. Yang saya hormati jajaran direksi dan manajemen PT Penerbit Erlangga, Bapak dan Ibu Guru yang mendampingi para siswanya di pagi hari ini, Ayah dan Bunda yang mendampingi para putra putrinya, and also the honorable judges. Yang saya amat banggakan juga para siswa yang akan bertanding di babak grand final Erlangga English Speech Contest 2023. Di pagi hari ini yang berkumpul bukan hanya dari jenjang SD atau SMP saja, yang datang adalah dari SD, SMP, SMA, dan SMK. Dan yang hadir di pagi hari ini datang dari seluruh Indonesia. Tepuk tangan dulu dong. Kami dari penerbit Erlangga mengucapkan terima kasih yang sebesar-besarnya atas kehadiran Bapak dan Ibu dan tentu saja suatu kebanggaan bagi kami bahwa Erlangga bisa mengadakan kegiatan yang seperti ini. Bagi Erlangga ini bukan hanya rangkaian dari HUT penerbit Erlangga yang ke-71 tapi ini juga merupakan uh, suatu ajang bagi para siswa untuk dapat berani tampil menunjukkan skill dan bakat mereka. Dalam hal ini adalah dalam berpidato dalam bahasa Inggris. Nah Bapak dan Ibu yang terhormat, bagi kami setiap kompetisi tentu ada yang menang dan ada yang kalah. Namun nah anak-anak semua jangan terlalu dipikirkan apakah saya akan menang ataukah saya nanti akan kalah. 
nikmati saja prosesnya. Karena buat penerbit Erlangga, kalian semua adalah pemenang. Kalian sudah berhasil mengalahkan 7.000 kontestan lainnya dari seluruh Indonesia. Karena memang Erlangga Speech Contest ini adalah perlombaan tahunan dari penerbit Erlangga yang tahun ini berhasil uh, diikuti oleh 7.000 siswa. Sehingga bagi kami tentu kalian adalah yang terbaik karena sudah yang terbaik dari yang terbaik yang hadir di sini. Jadi bagi kami yang paling utama kalian sudah berani mengekspresikan diri, mengekspresikan talenta yang kalian miliki dan sudah berani hadir untuk tampil dan berkompetisi. Akhir kata selamat bertanding, ingat meskipun pasti nanti ada yang menang, setiap pertandingan bukan hanya masalah menang atau kalah saja, tapi ini juga merupakan suatu proses belajar. Jadi nikmatilah prosesnya and always know that you are all capable of doing anything you set your mind to. So at the end, have fun and enjoy the contest. Thank you so much Mrs. Fikri Somyadewi for your speech. Baik adik-adik semuanya tadi sudah dibilangkan bahwa kontes ini semuanya itu sudah menang. Karena kalian melewati 7.000 peserta, jadi menang kalah itu urusan belakangan. Yang penting kalian adalah peserta terbaik. Tepuk tangan boleh, please give for us. Alright, and now I would like to invite the jury representative of Erlangga English Speech Contest to give a speech. Please welcome. Mr. Lee Norman Smith as a teacher of an international school in Jakarta. Good morning ladies, gentlemen. Morning. <laughs> to all of the participants that are with us today, to think about it, you are the best five in the whole of Indonesia. That's the first thing you have to put into your minds. You are better than anyone else. Unfortunately for Naila, for Miss Amber and myself, we have got a very, very evil task. We can only pick one of you to be the winner. There can only be one. So all of the weeks and months you guys have put into perfecting your performances. We have to pick one of you. But you are all winners. Each and every one of you are a success. Now, with the Adelanga, we've all been picked, the three of us, because they have faith in us, and we have faith in each and every one of you. There's four categories today. You've got the SDARE category. You've got the SMP category. We've also got an SMA and an SMK category. Five of you will be battling out for one trophy and that. Or that, if you're the little ones. Today, we are going to be judging on three particular categories. And the categories are the content. How do you put your development across to us? We also do the delivery. How does everybody react to your conversation, to your speech? How do people feel about what you have presented? So we will be checking on the audience. So if your mums and dads are here, go to them now and say, Shh, shout loud. Because we will be judging on their reactions. And the, the last one is the language. Now, in language, 
you've got the correctness. You've also got the appropriateness. That just means if you SD, do you use big, scary, horrible words that you don't know what they mean? That's scary. The older ones, we do hope you know big, scary words. Each and every one of you has five minutes. The judges um, will give you warning towards the end of your presentation, but you've also got a clock just over there. Once you have completed, one of the three of us will be asking each and every one of you one question. We will be asking you a question. And what answer do we not want to hear? Ngatao. <laughs> so think about what we could ask you. If you're telling a story, do you know your story? Do you know it off by heart? And that is the most important thing. Guys, don't be afraid. You will all succeed. Yeah. Content, 40 marks. Language, 40, or oh, the language is only 20 marks. And delivery, how you guys stand on the stage. Do you just stand like this and go, nya, 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 nya. you get a low score. This all belongs to you. The whole stage belongs to you. During your five minutes, it is yours. Own it. All right, so once again, I would like to thank you, Miss Amber and Miss Naila, plus Adlanga, and every one of these people. I'm not gonna mention all of them, but there's lots. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. We would all like to thank the parents for coming to support the contestants, for participating. So on behalf of myself, Lee Norman Smith, we salute you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Lee Norman Smith for your speech. And now, to all the participants, please give applause to our other judges and sis, Mrs. Amber Victoria, as the English teacher of a language course in Jakarta. Please stand up, Mrs. and say hi to everyone here. Say hi to everyone here. And also on YouTube, YouTube channel, say hi to Mrs. Amber. Please give applause. Thank you so much. And now, please give applause to our judges, Miss Naila Fahana, as the English content creator, and influencer say hi to everyone here and also on our youtube channel thank you so much miss naila and i forgot to introduce myself <laughs> hello everyone my name is ike mutiara as an mc and i will lead this contest until the end of this event and now i will tell you Aturan Grand Final Nasional English Contest hari ini. Peserta babak Grand Final Nasional ini adalah lima peserta terbaik perjenjang yang lolos dari babak semifinal nasional. Peserta membawakan pidato dengan tema yang sudah ditentukan oleh panitia. Dan tidak diperbolehkan membawa alat peraga apapun saat melakukan speech. Dan juga durasi speech maksimal adalah 5 menit. Akan ada timer sebagai penanda waktu pada saat peserta melakukan speech. Lalu Dewan Juri berhak memberhentikan pidato jika peserta melebihi batas waktu. Setelah peserta tampil akan ada sesi tanya jawab atau komentar dari juri. Akan ada satu orang di setiap satu peserta nanti. Aspek yang dinilai adalah Content, delivery, and also language. Peserta menggunakan seragam yang disediakan oleh pihak panitia. Supporter atau peserta dilarang untuk membuat keributan pada saat acara berlangsung. Jadi saat teman-teman semua 
One by one, di sini berpidato, tidak ada yang mengeluarkan suara dan kalau bisa handphonenya di silent. Jadi tidak ada suara-suara berisik nantinya ya. Dan juga para peserta wajib mengikuti acara sampai akhir dan tidak boleh meninggalkan acara atau area ini sebelum acara selesai. Dewan juri adalah pihak independen dan keputusan juri tidak dapat diganggu-gugat. Pengumuman pemenang dan penyerahan hadiah akan diumumkan pada acara Wording and Closing Erlangga Art Awards 2023 yang diselenggarakan pada hari Minggu besok pada tanggal 13 Agustus 2023. Tentunya di sini banyak sekali hadiah kalau tadi Mr. Lee sudah mengsound duluan hadiahnya di sebelah sana dan saya akan lebih memberitahu lagi hadiahnya apa aja. Untuk juara pertama jenjang SD berhak mendapatkan hadiah senilai 5 juta rupiah plus piala dan juga sertifikat. Untuk juara kedua jenjang SD hadiahnya senilai 4 juta rupiah dengan piala serta sertifikat. Lalu juara ketiga jenjang SD mendapatkan hadiah senilai 3 juta rupiah ditambah piala dan juga sertifikat. Lalu untuk jenjang SMP juara pertama akan mendapatkan hadiah senilai 7 juta rupiah ditambah piala dan juga sertifikat. Juara kedua mendapatkan hadiah senilai 6 juta rupiah dengan piala serta sertifikat. Dan juara ketiga jenjang SMP sama yaitu 5 juta rupiah dengan piala dan sertifikat. Lalu untuk juara satu jenjang SMA akan mendapat SMA atau juga SMK akan mendapatkan hadiah senilai 10 juta rupiah ditambah piala dan juga sertifikat. Untuk juara dua jenjang SMA dan juga SMK Dapatkan hadiah senilai 8 juta rupiah ditambah piala dan sertifikat. Dan juara ketiga jenjang SMA dan juga SMK akan mendapatkan hadiah senilai 6 juta beserta piala dan juga sertifikat. Wah banyak sekali kan hadiahnya, boleh tepuk tangan dong untuk Erlangga, keren banget. Dan juga untuk teman-teman di Youtube channel jangan lupa buat di sini nanti dilihat sampai Akhir ya, karena pasti banyak banget nih yang mendukung teman-teman dari luar-luar daerah. Baik teman-teman semua, now the contest is begin. So all the participants will call one by one according to the predetermined order number and the maximum speech duration is five minutes. So, ladies and gentlemen, sequence number one. Say your name, school, and the team of your speech. My name is Fradawa Sofifilia. I'm from Darmayu, Dapakan Baru. Uh, sorry, what is the last? Uh, the team of, of your speech. What? Team. Oh. Uh, how to study smarter. Red, magenta, and blue. I put the colors on my shoe. Hi, I'm Fradella from Dharma Yuda Pekanbaru. I'm very glad to meet you. Good morning, dear judges and all the audiences. Have you ever seen your friends do something silly to express how depressed they are studying? I have a friend of mine wrote this. Dear Math, please grow up and solve your own problems. I'm tired of solving them for you. <laughs> Silly, right? Studying. What comes in your mind when I say that word? Boring or exciting? I think people will agree. When I say that, studying is a key skill used not only in education, but also in day-to-day -day life. It builds knowledge and understanding of a subject area which helps prepare you for your future. For students, what is studying? It's just a simple word. Yet, what a daunting feeling most students get overwhelmed by. 
Even some students said that studying comes from the words study and dying. How come they put dying at the end of the word? Every student deserves an Oscar award for acting like they are understanding everything in class. But no one can deny that studying is the most important part of students' life. Even if you are not in a good mood, don't let the study blues discourage you. That is why, my beloved audiences, in this occasion, I'd like to deliver my thought about how to study smarter. First, make a plan and stick to it. Having a study plan with set goals help you feel more prepared and give you a roadmap to follow. Please don't cram since cramming doesn't improve longer term learning. Second, rewrite and refresh notes. Research has shown that if you review your notes within 24 hours of learning new information, you are 60% more likely to remember the information. 60%? That is no fake. If your notes are mass, rewrite them. Hide like or consider color coding. Red for vocabulary, green for concepts, etc. Add small drawing or concept maps to your notes. Why? The images will help you understand better. Third, tuck it down. This is one of my favorite suggestions. When you talk out loud, even to yourself, your brain processes the information differently. Try to explain the topics to someone else. You may also study in groups. For example, like me, I usually discuss the new information I got with my mom. Next, don't forget to find a productive space to study. Find a space that is free from distraction. Hmm, and the most important thing is, beware of your smartphone. Since it has magic and it's tempting, don't you dare to scroll on your phone. Finally, get a good night's sleep. It allows your brain to recharge. Studying is easier and more efficient if you find your own way to study smarter. Never give up. When you're about to give up of studying, remember this song. I won't give up, no, I won't give in Till I reach the end and then I start again No, I won't leave, I want to try everything I want to try even though I could fail my dear friends, let's study smarter. The my strategies inspires you. And I hope you can find your own way to study as a process of achieving and unfolding your dreams. That's all from me. Thank you for listening and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you so much for the lab. Please keep stand up what? on the stage, please. Oh, okay, sorry. It's okay. The beautiful voice from Cradilla Sophie Villa Bangun from SD Dharma Yuda Pekanbaru. And now, please, Mrs. Ember, you can ask Fadila the question. Hi, good morning. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, I okay. can. All right, I have a question for you. Do you think it's more effective to study individually or collaboratively? Would you like me to repeat the question? What? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Yeah. Do you think mm -hmm. it's more effective to study individually by yourself or collaboratively with a group of friends? And please explain why. I thought I think it will be more efficient if you find if you study with a group like your friends like your parents because it can help you understand better like if you don't understand you can just ask them and if you have your own opinion maybe you can discuss it with your group with your parents 
and find the best answer. That's all. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Amber, for thank your question. You. And thank you so much, Fredila Sofifila Bangun. Please give applause once more. Thank you. This weekend's number one. Thank you so much. Please, you can take a seat. Now, return to bed. So, to all participants and ladies and gentlemen, and now, the sequence number two. She is Hannah Tifa Firsti Kamil from SD Dukman Pada. Hello everyone. My name is Hannah Tifa Firsti Kamil. I'm from SDS IT Lukman Padang, West Sumatra. My topic today is about my best moments of my life. Good morning, honorable ladies and gentlemen, judges, and everyone who love to hear kids' stories. Hi, my name is Hana Tifa Firsti Kamil. You can call me Tifa. I'm from SDS IT Lukman Padang, West Sumatra. There are so many amazing things and wonderful experience to have when we are growing up. Such as spending quality time with families, cooking our first dish, meeting new best friends, getting a birthday surprise, achieving good marks at schools, and many more. Some of us may take them as the best moments in life. And of course, each of us may experience them differently. We find happiness, success, love, and overcoming obstacle to describe this moment. Then, a captivating question comes up. What's the best moments of your life, Tifa? The best moment? Hmm. Today, I want to share with you the best moments of my life. You know, being a kid is filled with so many incredible adventures and fantastic events. But if there's one day that stands out above the rest, I would say it's seeing an ambulance. Please, don't get me wrong. I'm not about to say that it's happy to witness the sorrowful things. No, ladies and gentlemen. I remember it was a bright and sunny afternoon. I and my parents were heading to Payakumbu, one of my hometown. On our way, rapidly, we heard the sirens of an ambulance at the back of us. I also noticed that a rider led the way which made the vehicles give way to the ambulance, including daddy's car. And I said, awesome. My brain suddenly recalled something. It just looks like what I saw on TV, where there was a motorbike leading in front of an ambulance. And the rider did like Elsa's hand movement in Frozen movies to get other cars to move. I was totally amazed. I did not only see the sympathy, but I also saw the kindness and respect of all drivers. You know, just like Walt Disney said, that the greatest moments in life are not just only about achievement, but rather about the thing we do for the people we love and esteem. Based on that, I chose to see an ambulance as the best moment in my life. It became more fascinating when my mom found and read me an article of 2021 that even scholar research, the habits of drivers during the ambulance moment it is said that all of us must be notified that giving an ambulance away could save life. Imagine, ladies and gentlemen, we could save life. Thus, the best moments of our life was not just only about the shiny present or the yummy cake. It is about the respect, love, and togetherness that made that day unforgettable. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening, and I wish you all have the best moments of your life. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, Hana Tifa. It's so wonderful story. Thank you. And now, please, Mr. Lee Smith, to give a question for Hana Tifa. Firsty. Hana Tifa, when you're at school, 
with all of your friends. How would you get them to teach their parents to move out of the way for the ambulance? How would you get them to give the ambulance the right of way for their parents? How can they t or teach their parents? Oh, um, thank you for that question, sir. How to teach him? Actually, when the sirens of an ambulance came and the lights from of the ambulance, and I should say we should give them away because that what you call emergency time. And that emergency time, we can't just stay on the track, but we need to give them away. So the ambulance can go for the patients back to the hospital as fast as they can. But how would you get your friends to learn from you? Oh, how my friends learn from me. I actually give them some, a little bit of questions for them. And sometimes if I tell them the right thing, and they will do it, and I hope they do what I have to say to them. So that's all from me. Thank you very much, Hannah Difa. Thank you so much, Mr. Lee Norman Smith, for the question. And thank you so much, Hannah Tifa Fristi Kamil from SD Lukman Padang, for your speech and your answer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome sequence number three, Miss Wilona Ariana from St. John Catholic School, PSD. I'm Wilana Ariana from St. John Catholic School. My theme is about, do you want to be a scientist or an artist? Good morning, honorable judges, fellow grand finalists, teachers, and esteemed guests. Let me begin my speech by telling you a story. Once upon a time, in St. John Catholic School, there lived a curious and imaginative young girl named Rilana. That's me, I'm Rilana, a primary five student. I love science with its exciting experiments and discoveries, but I also adore art, creating colorful masterpieces that fill my heart with joy. So, there is one thing I used to ask myself. Do I want to be a scientist or an artist? One day, during a school assembly, my science and art teachers were presenting exciting things about their subjects. My science teacher spoke about experiments that can lead to amazing inventions like different forms of artificial intelligence or medicines to cure chronic diseases. My art teacher showed variety of colorful painting styles and pictures of famous paintings which worth lots and lots of money. As I listened intently, I was torn between the two paths. After the assembly, I approached my principal for advice. I can't decide, miss, should I be a scientist or an artist? She smiled gently. Bilana, you don't have to choose just one. Science and art can work together, just like peanut butter and jelly. They complement each other in remarkable ways. I was intrigued. How can they go together, miss? Imagine this, she said. As a scientist artist, you can use science to learn more about the world and then express your discoveries through art. 
I, my eyes lit up with excitement. It was like a whole new world of possibilities opened before me. My dear friends, as we stand here today, we too have the power to explore our passions. We don't have to choose between being a scientist or an artist. Let's be like me, the scientist artist, where curiosity meets creativity. So, if you're asked if you want to be a scientist or an artist, what would you say? Why you pick one when you can have both? Thank you, and may we all discover the magic of blending science and art in our lives. Thank you so much, Wilona Ariana, the scientist artist. Wow, very, very good speech. And now, please, Mrs. Naila Farhana to give a question for Wilona Ariana. Hi, Wilona. That was a compelling speech. Thank you. So my question is, if you have made a choice about what you want to be, how will you convince your parents if they disagree with your choice? I could prove to them that I can do science experiments and learn about art. I could paint the stars and planets. So if my parents still don't believe me, what would I do? I think I will still choose the best choice for me. God will give me the best. Thank you. Thank you. Very good answer, Wilona Ariana. And thank you so much, Mrs. Naila Farhana, for the question. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome sequence number four, Kuhanes Nair from SD Bangun Insan Mandiri, Medan. Hi, everyone. I'm Kuhanes. I'm from Bangun Insan Mandiri School in Medan. What's more? It's okay. You okay. can start the speech. When I was five, on National Heroes Day, I remember my teacher asked me, Who is your hero, Kuhadesh? As a kindergarten kid, my answer was Avengers. Now, if the same question is addressed to me, I truly have to ask myself this time, Who is my hero? The honorable judges, my fellow grand finalists, and the respected audiences. Good morning. Hi, I'm Kwanish, a primary three student from Bangunitan Mandri Elementary School, Medan. It is such an honor to be here to tell you about my hero. And I hope at the end of my speech, everyone will have new perspective of a hero. Coming back to what I've told earlier, I question myself, who is my hero? My five years old me thought that Avengers were heroes because they saved the world from villains like Ultron, Thanos, and others. But after what I have faced, starting from preliminary round until semi-final round, my perspective of a hero has changed. We often think of heroes as people with capes and superpowers. But what if I tell you that heroes can also be regular people like you and me? Yes, that's right. My hero is someone very close to me. Can you guess who it is? Yes, it's myself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, heroes are people we admire and look up to. They do brave things and help others. But what if I tell you that being a hero can also mean being brave in our own lives and helping ourselves? Taking it back to me just like heroes, 
I face challenges too. These challenges might not be as huge as fighting villains in movies, but they're indeed important. There are the challenges that I have gone through until I stand here in front of you in Erlanga English Speech Contest 2023. And in facing challenges, I have to work hard, stand to things that scare me to achieve my goals. And of course, there are many heroes of the heroes behind me, supporting me until I can be here. Heroes aren't perfect, and neither am I. But you know what's amazing? Heroes learn from their mistakes, and I do too. When I make mistakes, I try to be better next time. That's a hero's attitude. Heroes have superpowers, and so do I. One of my superpowers is perseverance. That means I keep trying, even though when things are tough. A hero doesn't give up, and me too. I believe in myself and keep going. Ladies and gentlemen, as we know, heroes are there to make the world a better place, to help us still have smiles and hopes. I do that too. I speak kind words. I greet people. I try to do any act of kindness, as I know, a small act of kindness can make a big difference. In conclusion, a hero doesn't always need a mask or a fancy costume. A hero can be anyone as long as they face challenges, learn from their mistakes, and spread positivity. My hero is myself, and I'm proud of the hero I'm becoming too. Remember, each of us has the potentials to be our own hero. Looking back at what you've been through in every end of your story, who faces challenges and survives? You, yes, you. So let's be a hero. Let's be brave, kind, and never give up, as we're all heroes in our own ways. As Gerard Way says, heroes are ordinary persons who make themselves extraordinary. Thank you for listening, I'm Kwanish, and I'm the hero, not the Avengers. Wow, thank and you. Have a nice day. Thank you so much, Johannes Nier, the hero for himself. Oh my God, thank you so much for the speech. And now, please, Mrs. Amber Victoria, to give a question for Johannes. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Good. That was a very inspiring speech. Now, listen to my question carefully. In today's modern world, who do you think is a good role model for young people like yourself? And why? Hmm. Okay. So, my role model is Avengers and that their their kind their kindness their hard work became my inspirations and role models thank you thank you thank you so much Johannes Nier. thank you judges and i would like to say thank you to my heroes of the heroes who are my mom my aunt my teacher miss danov and all of my friends in Sumatra who supported me. Horas, Horas, Horas! Horas from Medan! Thank you so much, Johannes Ned. Horas! Thank you so much, Mrs. Amber Victoria, for the question. And now, for the last participant. And please welcome, Sigus number five. Silin Patricia Lim from Esa Cipta Harapan School, Samarinda. Hello everyone, my name is Silin Patricia Lim. I'm from Esa Cipta Harapan School, Samarinda. My team today is Why Should We Learn Art? These last couple days, I had a pretty interesting interaction with one of my best friends. We were working on the science project called the human bodies. 
and out of nowhere, she whined. Oh my god, this is so boring. I don't even understand what we are doing. Yep, we all have a friend like that. Well, I ignored her and went home. I read some articles, and my findings were horrifying. UNESCO stated that in 2022, Indonesia's reading and studying interest is only 0.0001%. Its literacy rank is below 10. Indonesia is the 62nd out of 70 countries. That seems so sad to see. No wonder I can see it clear around my friends and me. So I dive into some research again, how to boost our studying interests, but not make it seem boring or confusing. And the results were absolutely shocking. It's not by forcing you to read stacks of books. It's not by forcing you to study for hours and days, but merely by learning art. Yes, ladies and gents, this is why we should learn art for the better education in Indonesia. First, art stimulates our creativity and helps us with problem-solving skills. This is exactly what my best friend needs for our science project. Art helps us go beyond reality and explore our imagination. By learning subjects like science, language, and social is now way more fun by combining it with visual and artistic elements in it. <sighs> I should have asked my friend to make a human body poster with body parts that we get from magazines or other poster. That would have been so cool. Not only that, art also helps with our logical thinking. Art allows us to imagine the solution that we can test out in real life. That's like left brain and right brain working together. That's insane. Second, art is beneficial for our memory and self-control. Yes, yes, this might seem like a mission impossible, but hey, it's true. Having a strong visual ability from art will help us get a better memory and self-control. Because when we're creating art like a painting, we naturally work on our self-control. Because we can't just directly choose the color and the techniques without imagining the outcome of the process. We also need to remember the images, the instruction, and others that will make our memory stronger than ever. Third, art can help boost our academic success. Art lowers your stress, art boosts your self-confidence, and art helps with your problem-solving skills. This is exactly what we need for academic success. In fact, a study of over 10,000 third through eighth grade students said that students who join art class improved their writing skills by 13% and lower disciplinary issues by 3.6%. That's good news for all of us. Okay. So these are the three fascinating ways of how learning art can help a better education in Indonesia. Embrace art and make it as a part of our lives. I assure you, a bright future is waiting for all of us. I'm Selin, till next time. Thank you so much, Celin Pratishyalim from ESA Cipta Harapan School Samarinda. Such a beautiful speech. And now, please, please, Mr. Lee Norman Smith for the question for Lee Celine Patricia. Hello, Celine. Hello. Celine, it's an age-old question: modern art or traditional? Which one do you prefer and why? 
And who is your favorite artist? Excuse Tra me? Traditional art or modern art? So like art from the Van Gogh era or people from now, the Andy Warhol. Who is your favorite and why? Traditional art or modern art? Actually, both of them is important because actually how we make it is the same. Like I said before, art lowers your stress, art boosts your self-confidence, and art have a lot of benefits. That's why like academic, social, and so much more. So I say that modern art and traditional art is actually the same. We can also get the same benefits from them both. Thank you. Very good. Thank you so much, Selim Pratishya Lim. Thank you so much, please. You can return to your seat. And thank you, Mr. Lee Norman Smith for the question. Baik teman-teman semua, adik-adik yang di YouTube juga semuanya. Tadi sama-sama kita telah mendengarkan speech yang sangat luar biasa dari teman-teman. Kita tepuk tangan dong untuk lima orang dari SD yang sudah dipilih. Dari Pekanbaru, mana suaranya Pekanbaru? Padang mana suaranya Padang? BSD mana suaranya BSD? Medan mana suaranya Medan? Horas! Samarinda mana suaranya? Wow luar biasa sekali pendukung adik-adik kita ini dari seluruh Indonesia yang terpilih adalah lima orang yang sangat luar biasa sekali. Dan pastinya tentunya acara ini tidak akan terselenggara jika tidak adanya kolaborasi tentunya dengan museum dan cagar budaya yang juga berkolaborasi dengan TikTok serta disponsori oleh Gelora Aksara Pratama, Suma, Sidu, Yureka, CMB Niaga, Torch, BRI, PT Merikolax Indonesia, Sahabat Alam, Aikom Technology, Standar Chartered Bank, Hockben, To Medicine, Margono Mega Transport, PT Asia Quatronet, PT Indomobil Trada Nasional, PT Tunas Daya Mustika, PT Eksa Teknologi Indonesia, PT Bestindo Car Utama atau BMW, Kap Prakarsa Hanum dan Yudistiro, PT Cahaya Mandiri Teknik, PT Cinju Jaya, PT Budi Karya Sentosa dan juga PT Ratu Magenta, OCBC, Maybank dan juga tentunya didukung oleh Finoti Living, PT HK Teknik Jaya, PT Indo Prima Batara Krida, PT Zentrum, CV Mitra Jaya Wardani, PT Petroniaga Solutions, PT Petraco, Yurasi Manasa Karya, CV Kumoro Klim, PT Surya Palace Jaya, PT Asra International TBK, Sumber Tali Asi, PT Sumber Sari, PT Dua Bersaudara Logistik, Toyota Bengkel, PT Zigen Teknik Mandiri, PT Wirajaya, PT Sinar Mekar Express, PT Jakarta Global Indo, Satria Perkasa, Rahmani Catering, CV Onrik Catering, dan tentu saja media partner kita yang sangat luar biasa sekali adalah Jack FM, Gen FM, Provo, Piot, RCTI Plus, Majalah Gontor, Gontor Online, dan juga Event di Jakarta. Wah, tepuk tangan dong untuk sponsor kita dan juga media partner kita yang sangat luar biasa sekali. Jika tidak ada mereka, tentunya acara ini tidak akan diselenggarakan secara semulus ini. Dan juga saya ucapkan untuk teman-teman yang di YouTube channel, jangan kemana-mana. Karena kita pastinya nanti akan mendengarkan speech-speech yang sangat luar biasa sekali dari teman-teman SMP kita. Gimana teman-teman SMP udah siap? Udah siap? How do you feel? How do you feel? Oke, okay. deg-degan nggak? Oke, okay, tapi harus rileks ya pastinya ya. Dan tentunya teman-teman di YouTube jangan lupa nanti misalkan memang lihat di YouTube nih jangan lupa buat screenshot jagoan-jagoan kalian. 
boleh banget di tag, di post, di story dan juga Instagram dengan at buku Erlangga. Jangan lupa juga teman-teman di sini tentunya kita di sini lagi banyak banget pameran-pameran ya. Pameran-pameran di sana dan juga dilihat-lihat jangan lupa buat bikin konten, bikin reels di Instagram dan juga bikin story tentunya di Instagram ataupun di TikTok. Jangan lupa di tag at buku Erlangga. Luar biasa sekali semuanya keren banget. Adik-adik yang SD tadi, bagaimana perasaannya sekarang udah lebih lega? Sudah lebih lega? Oke, sudah relax ya. Sekali lagi kita bakal kasih tahu kalau misalkan juga adik-adik semuanya, siapapun nanti yang menang ataupun tidak menang, nggak apa-apa. Yang penting kalian udah adalah kalian adalah yang terbaik dari masing-masing daerah kalian ya, dari 7.000 peserta pastinya. Dan teman-teman semuanya pastinya di sini banyak banget buat teman-teman semua yang pengen lihat-lihat di sini art-art kita yang udah dipajang-pajang. Jangan lupa juga buat di post di story sekali lagi ya tentunya. Dan apa saja sih yang ada di IAA ini 2023? Pameran karya seni kegiatan yang memerkan karya finalis dari lomba dan kontes Erlangga Art Awards 2023 terdiri atas yang pertama karya seni in, instalsi yaitu ada seni lukis, fotografi, video dokumenter dan juga puisi. Lalu juga ada pameran buku yang terdiri atas penerbit Erlangga dan imprint by Eureka Book House dan juga UI Publishing. Lalu ada Boot sponsor kita dan juga tenan terdiri atas Gelora Aksara Pratama atau Suma, TikTok, Master Discount, Race, Jajadut ID, Torch, Ensign, Science Project, Gelang Kita, Sidu, Air Klika, dan juga Hokben. Pastinya acara harian meliputi workshop, talk show, lomba dan kontes pertunjukan seni dan budaya. Lalu malam penghargaan juga ada pemenang lomba yaitu pengumuman pemenang Erlangga Art Awards 2023 tanggal 13 Agustus 2023 yang mana besok ya teman-teman semuanya. Oke sekarang inilah dia saat yang ditunggu-tunggu. Kita akan mendengarkan lagi kontes selanjutnya. Dan tentunya sequence number one, Sang Kiara Abimata from SMP Budi Utama Melati Yogyakarta. I think we all have that one moment when we realize our exams are coming up. But then we also realize we haven't studied at all. And so we pull a bunch of all-nighters, staying up till 1 a.m. and waking up at 4 to continue studying. And maybe it's not all of us, but it's definitely a big portion. How many of you have attempted to study seriously all day, every day, but in the end just ended up getting burnt out? I'm gonna take a guess here and say that most of you probably only study during exam season or right before a test. Yes? No? Well, whatever the answer is, I know I was definitely included in the above statement. Until I learned a few things that have really helped me. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and the honorable judges. My name is Sankyara Budi Abimata from Budi Utama Junior High School in Jogjakarta. And today, I'd like to talk about how you can help yourself organize your habits. Well, start off, I see two main problems when it comes to handling a good learning routine. First of all, it's actually starting and managing it. And the second one is being able to learn effectively from said routine. I believe that learning is a skill. And by that, I mean learning as a skill demonstrates how good we are at gaining and maintaining the knowledge we are taught. And of how does that connect with the topic above? Well, to be good at learning, well, to go at having learning habits, you have to be effective at it. And like any other skill, learning can also be honed. One of the few ways to hone it is through having a positive and healthy mindset. Our mindset is one of the most important thing factors to our growth. Having a not healthy mindset, well, your growth will be stagnant. In fact, according to a study by Dr. Vetterweiss, 
a professor at the Weizmann Institute of Science, our mindset affects the outcomes and behaviors of our academic achievements, engagement, willingness to try new things, and of course, learning. Opening up yourself to a positive and healthy mindset that promotes growth, allows failure, but doesn't encourage it, will take you a long way. This will also bring me up to my next point. Know your learning style. Despite what school and many other things say, there is no certain way to learn. Some people are better by listening, others by writing notes, and maybe others by practicing. I myself am horrible at learning by watching videos or listening to people speak. But I learn best by writing notes and trying out the material for myself. Embrace your learning style and don't try to force yourself to use methods that don't stick with you because they'll only hinder your progress. In fact, your learning style also affects the next point I'm about to make, consistency and motivation. Your consistency is largely affected by your motivation and your motivation is largely affected in how able you are to do things. For example, say I want to learn advanced algebra. If I don't even know the basics of multiplication and division, well then, how am I supposed to start? If I tried learning it by ear, which I'm horrible at, as I already said so, and didn't know the basics, I'd get to nowhere. However, if I tried by using my notes and actually knowing the basics, well, I'd be much better off. This is why you have to take it slow and pace yourselves while also learning in the best way you can. Adding on to that, being able to reach your goals will keep your motivation up and running. In conclusion, the key to being able to organize a good learning habit or good learning habits is to be effective at learning. And to be effective at learning, you have to have a healthy and positive mindset. You also need to know and embrace your learning style. Other than that, you have to be consistent and motivated. And to build up to that, you have to pace yourselves and take things slow. But all in all, I think it's most important to remember that you're not learning to become the best in the world. You're learning to become better than you were before. So don't compare yourself to other people because everyone grows at their own pace. That's all I have to say today. Thank you for your attention and please have a great day. Thank you so much, Sankiara Abimata from SMP Budi Utama Melati, Yogyakarta for your speech. Wow, very wonderful. And now please, Miss Naila Farhana to give a question for Sankiara. Hi, Sankiara, how are you? I'm pretty good, nervous, but okay. <laughs> So um, I really like your speech. It's personally oh. a topic that I like very much. Oh. So I actually have a couple of questions, but I'm only going to ask you one question. So Go ahead. How do you keep good habits during the days that you just don't feel motivated? Oh, how do you keep good habits during the days where you don't feel motivated? Yes. Okay, that's a kind of hard question, but personally for me, when it comes to creating habits in general, you don't have to do it long. You just have to do it. So say usually you do... Uh, learning for like 15 to 30 minutes a day, but you're having a really bad day and you just don't want to do anything. Well, first of all, I just think, just keep doing it, but you don't have to do it long. One to five minutes is enough, as long as you just do it consistently. Because in the end, the reason why we even gain habits is because we just keep doing it every single day consistently, right? So yeah, you don't have to do it long, you just have to do it, that's all. Thank you. I completely agree with that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sankiara, for your answers. And also, thank you so much, Miss Naila Farhana, for the question. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome sequence number two from Palembang. She is from SMP Ignatius Global School. And here is Celine Livina Rosli.
According to Harvard Business Review, people generally spend more than four hours a day on their smartphones. That's equivalent to 60 full days every year. Not to mention, 80% of children check their phones every five minutes, as stated by Tanner Walton on TED's talk. It reminds me of a quote from Albert Einstein. It has become appallingly obvious that our technology has exceeded our humanity. The Honorable Judges, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ellen Levina Rusli from Ignatius Global School, Palembang. Today, I stand before you to address a topic that is affecting many of us. How to break smartphone addiction. Smartphone addiction is not in my dictionary. That's not me. I'm not addicted. Is that what you think? But let's be honest. <laughs> How often do you use your phones or check it throughout the day? What happens when you can't find it? Panic sets in. That's called nomophobia, the fear of being without your phones. But don't worry, you're not alone. Around 1.5 billion people in China and many others worldwide are suspected to be addicted to technology. It's become such a significant problem that parents are enrolling their children in the talk centers to break them free from this addiction. So, how can we break free from smartphone addiction? Here are some tips for you. First, set specific time limits for phone usage. The Canadian 24-hour movement guidelines recommend a maximum of two hours of recreational screen time daily for children aged 5 to 17. My dad applied to the Canadian 24-hour movement guidelines by setting a two-hour limit for me. He installed screen time parental control. Designed for parents, this app allows them to monitor and limit their children's screen time, set apps restrictions, and block specific content. The result is fantastic. It improved my sleep, family time, and focus breaking my smartphone addiction. Second, create phone-free zones in your home. My family decided to create phone-free zones during meals and important family moments. We placed a phone basket near the dining table, and during gatherings, we voluntarily put our phones in it. The result has been amazing. With no distractions, these phone-free zones strengthened our family connections, allowing us to cherish more meaningful moments together. Lastly, Find alternative activities that don't involve screens, such as reading, exercising, practicing your hobbies, or even joining religious activities like I did last year. I joined a church retreat for a week, and we were told to leave our phones behind. It was tough at first, but guess what? It felt so liberating. Without the constant distraction of a phone, I connected more with the people around me. We engaged in real conversations, shared stories, and laughed together without any digital interruptions. And it was one of the best times of my life. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make a change together. Put down those phones now. Engage with the world around you. Reconnect with the real human connections. Break free from smartphone addiction. Rediscover the joy of living in the present moments. Make a change and get a chance. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shulene Livina Rusli for SMP Ignatius Global School Palembang for your speech. And now, please, Mrs. Amber Victoria to give the question. Hi, how are you today? I'm great, even a little nervous, but okay. <laughs> okay, all right. So here we talked about digital technology and smartphones being the villain, but let's, play, let's look at the other side of it now and let me ask you a question, okay? 
How do you think we can utilize digital technology and in particular smartphones to enhance learning and development? Digital technology is now a part of our life. So how can we utilize it to enhance learning and development? So you're asking about how we can balance it, right? Yeah, like I told you before, that three points can help you with that. First, set specific time limits for phone usage. You can download any applications that there is on the Google. And the second one is create phone free zones. So you need people around you to be supportive to this. And then the third one is find alternative activities that don't involve screens. There are many other activities that a lot of more fun that you can socialize with many other people. So I think that's the answer from me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please give applause to Shalene Livina Rusli from SMP Ignatius Global School, Palembang. And thank you so much, Mrs. Amber Victoria, for the question. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sarah Garissa Humaira Muhammad from SMP Kasih Ananda Satu, Jakarta Utara. Sikis number three. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, a wonderful day to all of you. Alhamdulillah, hirabil alamin. Let us be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, for giving us the chance to be here today. My name is Sarah Kursa Humaira Muhammad. I'm an eighth grade student from Kasiananda One Junior High School, North Jakarta. Today, I stand before you to address a topic that affects each one of us in some way or another, the ever-challenging struggle of conquering our bad habit. I would like to share two stories. First story, a girl enjoyed unhealthy meals in daily basis and never worked out. This unhealthy eating habit continued until she's adult. She's married and have kids when she found out that she has chronic disease. Years of unhealthy lifestyle finally has toll on her. She didn't survive. Her young kids lost their beloved mother. Second story, a boy always procrastinating and neglect his study. Time goes by, the boy has grown up and have family, but the habits remain. It's hard for him to get a job, and when he got the job, it's even harder to retain it due to his character. Thus, the family cannot enhance their economic level. By not striving to reach his maximum potential since early age, he has jeopardized not only his own, but his family future. Ladies and gentlemen, watch your habit. It turns into character and watch your character, it turns into your destiny. It may cause irreversible harm, not only for you, but people you love too. It is crucial to understand that breaking a bad habit requires an unwavering commitment and dedication to self-improvement. It cannot be achieved overnight, but with time and persistence, we can truly conquer anything we set our minds to. So, why not start today? The first step is self-awareness. Ask yourself why you engage in that specific behavior and what purpose it serves in your life. Awareness lays the foundation for change to fully comprehend the consequences of our actions. Next. Replace the bad habit with a positive alternative. Simply stopping a negative behavior without replacement is often challenging and unsustainable. For instance, if you are craving for unhealthy snacks, try substituting them with nutritious fruits or nuts. 
by finding a healthy alternative, you regain control over your actions, making it easier to break the cycle. Another strategy is to break them down into manageable pieces. Large, daunting changes can often discourage us, leading us to abandon our efforts prematurely. Instead, break your habits into smaller, more achievable steps. And don't forget to surround yourself with supportive community and environments. Ladies and gentlemen, lastly, reward yourself for your progress. It's essential for maintaining motivation and building positive reinforcements. In conclusion, we all possess the power to tackle our bad habits. By being self-aware, proactive, and persistent, we can transform our lives for the better. Remember, change is not easy, but with dedication and support, we can break free from the chains of our routines and create a brighter future. As Jack Canfield said, your habits will determine your future. Thank you, honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, for your kind attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and have a great day. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, Sarah Karissa Humaira Muhammad. From SMP Kasih Ananda 1, Jakarta Utara. Wow, orang Jakarta nih berarti ya. Baik, and now please Mr. Lee Norman Smith to give the question for Sarah. Morning Sarah. Morning sir. Uh, Sarah, one thing you didn't tell us. One of your bad habits and how did you manage to overcome your, your problem? Okay, thank you for your question, sir. I'm actually a quiet and shy person. I used to be so reluctant to speak in front of so many people. I have this habit where I used to be so quiet in front of people I just met. But I aim to be a diplomat and that requires communication skills. So for me to be here today in front of all of you is actually me tackling my bad habit and my fear. Thank you. Wow, very good answer. Thank you so much, Sarah Karissa Humaira Muhammad for the answer. And also thank you so much, Mr. Lee Norman Smith for the question. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome sequence number four. Anaya Love Sialagan from Izem Yahya, Bandung. Homework, the thing given by teachers to students to help us stay productive in our spare time has now evolved into a demanding presence. Though, I can't help but wonder, as students, do we truly have any free time left to call our own? Ladies and gentlemen, research says that approximately 30 to 40% of junior high school students report having limited free time on weekdays due to the time they spend on homework and related schoolwork. When I was younger, after school, I could take a peaceful one hour nap, then wake up to do my homework. By then, I would still have plenty of time to play and spend time with my beloved family. But nowadays, as I grew older, I noticed some changes. I come home late from school, then have to immediately start working on my task. I hardly get any breaks, and it feels like I'm constantly busy. Hello, respected judges and dear audiences. My name is Anaya Love Shalagan, and I'm a student from Yahya Christian Junior High School, Bandung. May I ask you, do you think that there is a value in homework? Well, Fun fact, the notion of homework can be taken back to a certain man named Roberto Nevelis, a teacher from Venice, Italy. The year was 1905 when he introduced something that would leave a lasting mark on education. His creation, 
Well, homework. But what's interesting is that Nevelis did not create homework to help us. Instead, he used it as a way to punish students who struggled to understand their lessons in class. So, does this mean that homework was actually made to make our lives miserable? Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, in this era of constant connectivity and information overload, the average student juggles many responsibilities, from classes, extracurricular activities, and personal commitments. So, with this in mind, you all might question, why don't we just remove homework from our lives altogether? Well, while the burden of excessive homework is undeniable, there are still a few reasons to why homework stays relevant in our daily lives. Homework helps to reinforce what we learn in class. It deepens our understanding and improves our skills. Homework teaches us time management. Learning to allocate specific time for different events can prepare us for the demands of the real world. And don't forget that it also helps us with our problem solving and develops our critical thinking skills. So, why do we still feel so burdened by homework if it's so beneficial to us after all? You might ask. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the stress that we experience does not diminish the value of homework. Yet, it is crucial to understand that the overwhelming sensation that we feel does not come from the homework itself, but rather from the huge assignments that is assigned to us each and every day. It's not that each assignment is too difficult or too much on its own, but it's when they all pile up that it makes us feel overwhelmed. So, what shall we do? The best way to help this is to be better at time management. Don't just sit down and scroll through your mobile phone if you know that you have a lot of tasks, but learn to manage your time wisely and spread out even time for all of your assignments. I do know that the stress that we feel can be defeating, but must we extinguish the flames of our confidence and happiness? Absolutely not, for it is not the way of stress that defines us, but the unrelenting spirit to keep on persevering and not giving up. So, remember to balance your real life and homework by time management and productivity. My name is Anayal of Shalagan. Thank you and have a very blessed day. Wow, thank you so much Anaya Love Siagan from SMP Yahya Bandung for your speech. And now, please Mrs. Miss Naila Farhana to give a question for Anaya. Hi Anaya, how are you doing? Uh, I'm actually, I was quite nervous but now I'm feeling very relieved to be honest. That's really good, that's really good. I'm happy for you. So my question is, do you think homework is still useful right now to reinforce students' knowledge? with the advent of AI technologies like ChatGPT, because people can easily get ChatGPT to do their homeworks for right. them. Yes, that's do right. Do you think it's still useful, having homework? Personally, I think that even the smartest artificial intelligence cannot um, outstand the, smart, the, the knowledge of humans. And I think that actually homework is a very good way to help us prove that Artificial intelligence cannot uh, replace humans later in the future. I pretty much think that homework can help us think better, know more things, and as I said before, it develops our critical thinking skills. Even the, um, by teachers giving us homework, it teaches us to think more critically, and it helps us not rely on other people. And yeah, I think that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Teteh Anaya from Bandung. Then thank you so much also, Miss Naila Farhana for the question. And now this is the last participant from the Champion School, Bali. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kesia Putri Rianto. You are ugly. 
You are stupid. You are worthless. Has anyone ever said those words to you? Have you ever faced bullying before? I saw some people nodded their heads. Yes, me too. In fact, more than one out of five students have reported being bullied by classmates, and an estimated 160,000 kids a day refuse to go to school because of bullying. Bullying is an act that can harm anyone, physically, mentally, and verbally. It has caused pain for generations, and it is very harmful as it can cause anxiety, depression, and self-harm. Do you know that 40% of school shooters have been bullied before? Witnesses of a 2013 shooting at Sparks Middle School in Nevada recall the 12-year-old shooter telling a group of students, you guys ruined my life, so I'm going to ruin yours. This student had been bullied for years, neglected by his peers, and finally had enough. This is the consequence of the massive increase in school bullying these past couple of years. Students feel lost, unloved, and worthless. Good morning, honorable judges and everyone. I am Keisha Putririanto from the Champion School Bali, and I will share with you three things that we can do to tackle bullying in schools. First, tell your parents or teachers about the bullying. If you are being bullied, don't be afraid to speak up. It is very important to tell an adult as they have the power to intervene, help stop the bullying, and find protection for you. Back then when I was eight years old, I was forced to help my bully cheat in an exam. They threatened me and told me they won't play with me anymore if I didn't help them cheat. But I told my teachers about it and my teachers handled the situation afterward. Second, Feel good about who you are. Bullying is usually done by people who do not feel good about themselves, and they often need to put others down in order to feel better about themselves. So we must boost our confidence. Try to make yourself feel good about who you are. For instance, do you want to be more fit? Then you must decide to spend less time sitting on the couch, watching TV, or playing on your phone, and spend more time exercising. And last but not least, standing up for yourself. It's not your fault that you are being harassed. You, like everyone else, deserve to feel safe. Tell the bully, no, stop bothering me. You have a right to not be bullied. Standing up to the bully by simply saying no sends a message that you are not afraid and will not condone his or her behavior. Bullying is never okay. If we are not standing up for ourselves, we are letting the bully win. And for all of us, and I mean us, all of the individuals who watch my speech, please don't be a bystander without action and staying silent when we are aware that our friends or someone else are being bullied. If we are not fixing the problem, we are part of it. If you feel like you cannot make a difference, Listen to what John F. Kennedy said. One person can make a difference, and everyone should try. So go make a difference. Let's all be an upstander who stands for the right thing and supports the victims who are being bullied. It's time for us to stand up against bullying. And remember to say this to yourself and your friends. You are beautiful. You are unique, you are worthy. Thank you. <laughs> wow, wow, thank you so much, Kesha Putri Rianto from Bali. <laughs> thank you. And now, please, Mrs. Amber Victoria to give the question for Kesha Putri Rianto. Hi, how are you today? I am fine, thank you very much. Okay, here's your question. What is social media's role in the type of bullying that many people experience in today's society? 
Well, uh, a type of bullying in social media is mostly called cyberbullying. It has similar uh, types of bullying as verbal bullying and mental bullying. It basically hurts someone's feelings through speech or maybe some other types of videos or something. But what the point is, is that cyberbullying is basically social media bullying and it can also hurt people's feelings very much. But that's all. Thank you very much. Welcome. Wow, thank you so much. Kesha Putri Rianto, please give applause once more. The last participant from Bali. And thank you so much, Mrs. Amber Victoria for the question. Bagaimana teman-teman semua? Masih semangat? Masih semangat? Kayaknya ini udah melihat beberapa peserta dari SD, SMP yang SMA, SMK-nya udah mulai mukanya. <laughs> It's okay ya. Keep calm, okay? Be patient. Because because we still have more time. Jadi, so we will continue our contest with the SMA. Okay? But I will give you more time to still learn and practice around 10 minutes. So, I will ask the question for the, for the judges. What do you think uh, the appearance of the all participants from ST and also SM, SMP? Maybe Mrs. Amber? What do you think about the appearance from the participants, the SD, SMP? What do you think? I think that all of our participants today have been amazing so far. Oh. To be, to be very honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, I was very surprised at the competency of our participants today. Not only were they extremely confident, their paralinguistics or their body language has been amazing, but they all chose very important content and topics today. I can't believe it, to be honest, yeah? Amazing. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you so much, Mrs. Amber. And now please, Mr. Lee Norman Smith, what do you think about all participants? Ladies and gentlemen, if your child is seated to the one side of you, I would ask you please to look at your child. Any of your children sitting there? Which one is yours? You just point randomly, it's like, come on, where's your child? Which one? Stand up. You're on your way soon. <laughs> Everyone else, guys, look at your children. They are exceptional human beings. What they have done already, the SD, the SMP, they are talented beyond their years. They're bringing sensitive topics, like the shirt you have. That's a very beautiful topic. And the kids from bullying, from bad habits, mums, dads, we all have our own topics. Now it is time for us to learn from the next generation. We learn about our mobile phones. Mummy standing there with the mobile phone, hello. At least it's not a selfie. Guys, anyone that is walking past, they see and we can learn from the next generation. So I would like all of you so far, even if your children haven't gone, let's give it up for these 10 individuals. Can you guys stand up? All 10 of you. And let's give it up to them so far. Guys, well done. Wow, thank you so much, Mr. Lee Norman Smith. And also all participants, you are very amazing. And now, the last judges, please, Mrs. Miss Naila Farhana. Wing it. Hi, everyone. Hi. So, I think a lot of the comments have been said by Mr. Lee and Ms. Amber. So, um, I'm actually very surprised how confident you guys have been. I can imagine how much work that you've put into 
um, this speech. So I want to give you another round of applause. I wish I had the same level of confidence as you guys when I was your age. So you guys did amazing. So be proud of yourselves. Thank you so much, Miss Naila. Baik teman-teman semua yang lagi nontonin kita semua di YouTube channelnya Erlangga. Gimana perasaan kalian? Pastinya bingung kan? Siapa nih kira-kira yang bakal jadi pemenangnya? Juara 1 sampai dengan 3 dari kategori SD dan juga SMP. Makanya jangan kemana-mana, tetap di sini karena kita akan melanjutkan lagi pastinya untuk kejenjang SMA dan juga SMK. Dan jangan lupa buat post keseruan English Contestnya Erlangga hari ini. Dan jangan lupa juga tag di story at buku Erlangga, bisa juga upload di Reels, kemudian di TikTok juga boleh. Dan jangan lupa juga sekali lagi saya ingatkan untuk tag Instagramnya at buku Erlangga. Dan buat teman-teman semua yang ada di sini, saya ingatkan juga sekali lagi untuk melihat-lihat pameran karya seni, yaitu kegiatan yang memamerkan karya finalis dari lomba dan juga kontes Erlangga Art Awards 2023. Yang pastinya di sini sudah ada semua terpampang yang keren-keren banget. Dari ada karya seni instalasi, seni lukis, Fotografi, video, dokumenter, dan juga puisi. Lalu ada pameran buku terdiri atas penerbit Erlangga. Dan juga imprint by Eureka Book House. Ada UI Publishing. Lalu juga ada booth sponsor dan tenan terdiri atas Gelora Aksara Pratama atau Suma. TikTok Master Discount, Res, Jaja.id, Torch, Einstein Science Project, Gelang Kita, Sidu, Erklika dan juga Hawkband. Lalu ada acara harian kita meliputi workshop, talk show, lomba dan kontes, pertunjukan seni dan budaya. Lalu besok adalah malam penghargaan pemenang Lomba Erlangga Art Awards 2023. Wow, tepuk tangan dong boleh buat Erlangga. Keren banget yang mana rangkaian acara ini sudah diselenggarakan dari tanggal 8 kemarin sampai dengan besok tanggal 13 Agustus luar biasa sekali nih sudah kita sudah ada rangkaian acara harian tadi saya sudah sebutkan mulai dari workshop talk show lomba dan kontes pertunjukan seni dan juga budaya pastinya di sini juga tadi teman-teman sudah mengikuti rangkaian English speech ya kan English contest juga dan juga pastinya kita akan mengetahui siapakah yang akan menjadi juara pertama kedua dan juga yang ketiga dan tentunya acara ini tidak akan terselenggara pastinya jika tidak ada kerjasama dengan orang-orang yang juga brand-brand yang keren-keren ini. Yang pertama dari Museum and Cagar Budaya, lalu juga berkolaborasi dengan TikTok serta disponsori oleh Gelora Aksara Pratama, Suma, Sidu, Eureka, CMB Niaga, Torch, BRI, PT Microlux Indonesia, Sahabat Alam, Icon Technology, Standard Chartered Bank, Hokben, Two Medicine, Margono Mega Transport, PT Asia Quattronet, PT Indomobil Trada Nasional, PT Tunas Daya Mustika, PT Exa Technology Indonesia, PT Bestindo Car Utama atau BMW, Kap Prakarsa Hanum and Yudhistiro, PT Cahaya Mandiri Teknik, PT Cinjo Jaya, PT Budi Karya Sentosa, PT Ratu Magenta, OCBC, Maybank. Dan kemudian didukung oleh Finoti Living, PT HK Teknik Jaya, PT Indo Prima Batara Krida, PD, PT Zentrum, CV Mitra Jaya Wardani, PT Petroniaga Solutions, PT Petraco, Urasi Manasa Karya, CV Kumoro Clean, PT Surya Peles Jaya, PT Astra International TBK, Sumber Tali Asi, PT Sumber Sari, PT Dua Bersaudara Logistik, Toyota Bengkel, PT Zegen Teknik Mandiri, PT Wirajaya, PT Sinar Mekar Express, PT Jakarta Global Indo, Satria Perkasa, Ramani Catering, dan juga CV Onrik Catering. Dan juga tentunya dengan media partner kita yang sangat luar biasa sekali ada Jack FM, Gen FM, Provo, Piot, 
RCTI Plus, Majalah Gontor, Gontor Online dan juga Event Jakarta. Tepuk tangan boleh dong, ini banyak sekali sponsornya dan juga media partner kita yang sangat mendukung rangkaian acaranya dari Erlangga ini ya teman-teman semuanya. Nah sekarang nih biar enggak gugup, biar enggak deg-degan lagi aku mau tanya-tanya dulu sama teman-teman semua yang ada di sini boleh ya kita ngobrol-ngobrol sejenak ya. Oke, okay. aku mau tanya sama siapa di sini ya? Yang paling jauh dari mana ya di sini ya? Ada yang paling jauh, ada yang dari Papua? Atau dari Sulawesi? Kalimantan tadi mana Kalimantan? Samarinda. Oh, you. What's your name? I forgot. Oh, yeah. Celine. Celine, how long that you have been prepared for this English contest? English speech contest. Yes. This one for this final round, probably two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. And then, how you practice this uh, English speech contest with your, with whom? With your mom? With your teacher? I practice uh, my English speech contest with my teacher. Oke, okay. where is your teacher? Is here? I don't know. Where is he? Is he here? He in... is here, but I don't know where. Oh, is he? maybe. <laughs> We go to the toilet, maybe. Okay. And your mom? There. Where is mom? Okay, hello, mommy. And your daddy also? Oh, hello, daddy from Samarinda. Wow. So, how you feel now after doing your speech, the best speech to ever speech, of course. I feel okay now. Okay. Before I was nervous. Okay. Thank you so much, Sally. Thank you. Thank you from Samarinda. And siapa lagi yang jauh tadi ya? Oh, Medan. Hi. I forgot your name. Your name? Kuhanes. Can you stand up, please? Okay. Kuhanes, how long did you win prepared for this English speech contest? For this English speech contest, I have prepared for five days. Five days? Wow. Start, starting from Monday. From Monday. Ooh, so. With whom you write the content and also practice with the teacher, with your mom or your friends? I practice with my teacher and my mom. The teacher is here? No. Okay. Your mom? Uh, she is here, but I don't know where she is. <laughs> I don't know where she okay, is. Okay, but with your dad also or you just with, with your mom? My, my dad passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Please give applause for Kohanes. See, he is a strong boy and very amazing speech. I love your speech about the heroes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kohanes. You can take a seat again. And now, from SMP, from Bali. Hi, Gek. And in Bali, uh, everyone just say Gek. Yeah, no. I think you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. In in Yogyakarta we say Mba. In Bandung Tete. In Bali Gek. Maybe you don't know. <laughs> okay. Don't Maybe you that. just uh, <laughs> you just have a conversation with English. Yes. Okay. English. Okay. All with English. All English. In Bali, my friends in Bali uh, just uh, call another with Gek. I uh. think yeah. If I if I don't forget then. Okay. So hi. Say hi for Hello, our friends camera, in the YouTube cool. channel Erlangga. <laughs> so, how long did you have been prepared for this English speech contest? I'm not exactly sure, but I want to know is like it's about a couple of weeks. 
couple weeks. Long time. Yes. Oh, long time. Yeah, and also uh, very nervous, right? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I actually like was mm-hmm. not prepared to get on stage because I was so used to looking at a phone. But uh-huh. thankfully, uh, with cooperation with my school and my mom, I ended up doing it in front of my friends, and now I can do it correctly. Wow, of course. And also, your mom is here. Yes, my mom's there. My yes. lovely mother over there. Hi. Get a wavy wavy right there. Yeah, she's beautiful, I know. Yeah, I know. Same like you. She's very beautiful. Yes. So, how long have you have been staying in Jakarta? Maybe uh, till tomorrow? I started staying about yesterday. So, I believe like either a day and a half. Uh huh. So, yeah. you, you, go, you go back to Bali? And about Monday. Oh, Monday. Monday. So, you maybe yes. have a walk around and look yeah, around. Like, oh, Monas, cool. Monument National. You can oh, take yeah. a picture there. Yes. Very near here. Maybe after this. But for after this English speech contest, you can go there and maybe walk. It's very, very near here. Because uh, in the evening, I will have a dance there. Oh. Monas. <laughs> so maybe you it. can see the Monas. Very, very beautiful. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Shout out to my school, the yeah. champion school. Lovely. Hi, friends. Shout out to my school. They're great. You are great. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Oke, okay. kalau tadi kita udah ngomong sama teman-teman SD, SMP, saya mau tanya teman-teman SMA nih lagi deg-degan nih ya. <laughs> Halo, maybe yang di sini yang deket. Halo, what's your name? Keisha. Keisha, so many Keisha here. Keisha and also Celine. <laughs> Celine and also I have, I I see the two couples name is Celine from SD and also SMP. And now Keisha from yeah. SMA and also SMP. Maybe you can uh, know each other. The same case, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, where are you from? Uh, dari Surabaya. 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 Keren banget. So, how long did you have been prepared for this uh, English speech contest? Uh, pertama kali, jadi ini kan speechnya dari quarter final, semifinal, terus baru ini ya, grand okay. final. Dan waktu grand finalnya ini kita dapat tema yang berbeda gitu dari semifinalnya. Nah temanya ini dikasih tahu Senin kemarin. Wow. Jadi ya setelah dapat tema itu langsung mulai research, research, ya terus langsung. Sama mulai, siapa? Uh, ambil sendiri. Sopo, ambil sopo. Sendiri sih. Sendiri. Untuk yang ini, ya. Wow. But you come here with your mom or your teacher? Sama papa. Oh sama papa. <laughs> yeah. Hello daddy. <laughs> Wah wow, thank you so much so. Selamat bersiap-siap. Ya. Nanti giliran Anda untuk maju ke depan. Ya. Sudah siap, teman-teman SMA? Belum ada yang geleng-geleng. Nggak mau, nggak mau. Tadi harusnya jam 1 siang, kenapa jam 11, kakak? Oke, okay. because we have very, very many times ya di sini. Jadi sekarang kita harus mulai jam 11 siang. Oke, okay, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Please give, give applause to all the participants. Very cool. So, ladies and gentlemen, and now we start from SMA and sequence number one. And here is Tiffany Kiefer Makarios from Regent Secondary School, Bali. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, everybody. I'm so happy to be here, all the way from Bali to Jakarta. And I'm kind of culture shock about the traffic here in Jakarta. It's so, so bad. And I guess I'm starting to believe that there may be more cars than people here. Am I right? Speaking of cars, how many of you here come to this place by car? Hmm, quite a lot, I see. So, did you know that it takes 30,000 parts inside a car? And all these parts have different functions, shapes, and sizes, and they all work together to make sure that the car works. And this applies to us as well. 
Look around you, to your left and to your right, in front of you and behind you. There are numerous ethnicities, backgrounds, cultures, and genders sprinkled all over the world, especially in our country, Indonesia. Our country has so much more than what meets the eye. But even with all of these dynamic diversities, we still experience a lot of conflicts from being excluded by friends to big riots because of differences in ethnicities and beliefs. So how do we actually build this harmonious society and embrace our differences? Just like how cars, parts work together to make sure that the car works, we can also drive our car. C-A-R. C, celebrating diversity. So, I am a part of the student council where everybody is different. Our ages, our cultures, genders, and even interests. And when we want to make a decision, we make sure to listen to everyone and we make sure that nobody is left out. With all of these different opinions, we can have a more dynamic solution and perspective. To me, celebrating diversity is a lot more than just accepting and everybody is unique, but it's also seeing that diversity is a strength rather than just a weakness. A, avoiding stereotypes. Have you ever been stereotyped before? Stereotyping is not just by ethnicity and skin color. It can also be about somebody's character and genders. I've always been pressured to meet the expectations of other people. People envision me to be the ideal female student who's always hardworking, constantly taking notes, and always being asked for help. And luckily for me, a friend of mine saw me with a bias-free lens and told me that it's all right to be myself. And from her, I learned that by accepting others and empathizing with others, we can avoid those stereotypes and we can understand others. R, reaching out. I have a friend who used to be a complete stranger to me. She was so different. We had different skin colors, backgrounds, cultures, and I knew what it felt like for her to be in a new school. It must be so peculiar. And so I reached out to her and offered my friendship. And through this, we became best friends. Celebrating diversity is a big thing. And reaching out is a part of it. Reaching out is actively engaging with and connecting with other people from different backgrounds, cultures, and genders. And it's about breaking down barriers and overcoming biases and moving towards a more harmonious and interconnected society. Ladies and gentlemen, you, me, us, we are different. But together, hand in hand, we can commit to a better society. Every time you open your car, always remember car. Celebrating differences, avoiding stereotypes, and reaching out. For what are we if we do not abide by our national identity? What are we if we do not implement our greatest foundation in unity, in Bineka Tunggal Ika? Have you driven your car today? Food for thought, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Tiffany K. Formacarios, your designated diversity driver. Wow! Thank you so much, Tiffany Kiver Macarios from Regent Secondary School, Bali, for your amazing speech. Wow! And now, please, Mr. Lee Norman Smith to give the question. Hello. Hello. Um, coming from Bali, one of the di most diverse places in Indonesia, how long have you been in Jakarta for? now this is my second day here have you seen any stereotypes and if you have how do you feel and how did you react to stereotypical behavior in jakarta yes 
In Jakarta, lately I haven't seen anything. But even if stereotypes happen, I would want to tell them that diversity, differences, everything, this is what makes us unique. And especially with Bineka Tunggal Ika, us as citizens and non-citizens, we recognize the reality that diversity is what makes us, our nation, unique and gives Indonesia its own identity. Very good answer. Well done. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you so much, Tarbani Giver from Bali. And also thank you so much, Mr. Lee Norman Smith, for the question. And now, ladies and gentlemen, seconds number two, please welcome Dalin Rafaela Suryakanto from SMAK BPK Penabur Bandar Lampung. The scorching hot sun beaming on your head. The dry land you feel as you walk towards the far away market. The heat is unbearable as you walk for hours and hours carrying items to sell for the sake of your family. There's barely any water left because the lakes have all run dry, leaving empty canoes and cattle searching desperately for water. If fishermen were your main target demographic, who would you sell to if they weren't out there fishing? This is a true story told from the perspective of Belita, a hardworking African mother who relies on open water sources like Lake Chilwa for her livelihood. But because of climate change, the shifts have become more and more unpredictable as the lake's dry cycle could start any day now. And the thing is, climate change doesn't just affect Belita's life, but our lives as well. I'm sure we've all noticed the changes. How contaminated our air is nowadays. The ever-changing weather between rainy and sunny. Even though Jakarta is ranked number one as the city with the most polluted air, and Indonesia as the fourth largest greenhouse gas emitter on this planet, our country continues to become one of the more ignorant ones towards climate change. We must break through our old habits and start anew. Thankfully, this issue has been acknowledged because more people are playing a role in helping our environment. Our very own Director of Road Transportation, Suharto, encourages the use of electric vehicles. Online influencers like Mr. Beast, who is constantly involved in environmental projects. Even celebrities like Leonardo DiCaprio has invested millions towards saving coral reefs and wildlife alike. All these people have worked very hard to make our situation known. And now it's our time to step up, spread the word, and to take action. By banding together with others and making our voices be heard, we encourage others to do the same. So let's all join hands. Start by reducing food waste, recycling old plastics and cans, maybe even reusing them. Don't just plant trees for your sake, but for the sake of your family, friends, Belita's friends, even future generations. They will reap what we sow today. Every single action we make, no matter how big or small, will determine our planet's future. After all, 
All it takes to start a forest is to plant a single seed of hope. Plant it. It can all start from you. Thank you. Wow, very, very wonderful. Thank you so much, Darlene Rafaela Suryakanto from SMK BPK Penabur Bandar Lampung. And now, please, Miss Naila Farhana for the question. Hi, Darlene, how are you feeling? Better? <laughs> <laughs> good, good. So, um, my question is if you were the leader of your community, what initiatives would you lead or would you start to encourage your community to adopt a more environmentally friendly habits? Okay, first of all, before I answer that, thank you so much for the question. That's a really interesting one. I think I'd follow in the footsteps of my current community. We have these events. Uh, one time, we all joined up and started to clean our community together. It was a really fun thing to do, especially since we were helping climate change. We also started planting little trees to, so it can help our environment. Another thing I do is that I think I would push the movement even further by having rewards for those who do the most for our environment. It not only pushes them to be better, but it also gives a reason for others to try and beat that other person. Because to be a leader is to inspire others. So another thing we should do is to be a, an example for our community. So yeah, that's basically what I would do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Darlene, for the answer. And thank you so much, Kak Naila Farhana, for the question. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Queen Nessa Aflia Violen from SMA Maitri Yawira Palembang. Test, 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 check. Ladies and gentlemen, does anybody here agree with me that school feels like a nine to five job? Raise your hand. Same, me too. Do you ever wonder if it's really necessary to spend a whole day at school learning six subjects a day? The honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good day. I'm Queen Essa from my Terra Senior High School, Palembang. I stand before you today with an exciting vision of the school of the future. The school of the future is not just a physical building. It is a culture of competence development, a place where learning is dynamic and adaptive to the needs of the information society. Now, let's rewind to my younger self. When I was 10, I asked myself, what if someday I live alone? Do I get to make my own rules at home? Do I pay for using TV 24-7? To be honest, these questions keep haunting me until now. Why? Because schools don't teach us about those things. Wouldn't it be nice if you learn how to earn money, how to manage finances, how to communicate, how to negotiate, rather than studying advanced algebra or the powerhouse of the cell? I don't say that they're useless, but how many of us are gonna make use of them in our daily life? What we urgently need is how to use the knowledge we get in our real everyday life. The skills that make us confident and capable in the real world. Schools in the future need to add a new subject called life. We need to learn about it as it's not easy to grow up without a guidebook. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking of school hours, does longer school hours facilitate student learning and improve students' performance? 
In fact, according to a recent study by renowned education researchers, over 85% of students believe that the traditional educational model fails to prepare them adequately for the challenges of the modern world. Instead, shorter school hours are a significant change we hope for, inspired by Finland's balanced approach. More time for passions and activities leads to a fulfilling school life. Let me share my schedule with you. Long school day till 3 p.m. Then, extracurriculars till late. I'm exhausted and miss family time. Imagine a day ending at 12 p.m., allowing speech practice, dance rehearsal, and even singing rehearsal while bonding with family. A balanced and rewarding school life awaits. The distinguished judges and my fellow friends, in this digital era, technology isn't just a mere tool. It's a getaway to boundless possibilities. Well, we have experienced the positive impact of technology itself on our education. Virtual classrooms have enabled seamless learning. For instance, when I'm sick and can't attend school for weeks, virtual classrooms keep me connected with my teachers and classmates. This experience highlights the potential in providing equitable access of education for all. Now, let's talk about teachers, the real superheroes of our learning journey. Imagine all teachers who are able to become mentors and guides in our journey of self-discovery and growth. Not just giving lectures, but really understanding our unique talents and interests. A school where teachers inspire us to dream big and reach for the stars. Ladies and gentlemen, in closing, Steve Jobs, the co-founder of Apple, once said, the school of the future will emphasize creativity, imagination, critical thinking, and problem solving. It's about teaching children to think, not just memorize facts. I strongly believe that the school of the future will be a school that equips us not just with knowledge, but with the skills and confidence to navigate the complexities of the world. The school of the future may take time to become a reality, but I am positive that we can create an educational environment that empowers and inspires generations to come. I'm Queen Essa, thank you. Wow, please give applause to Queen Essa Avlia Ferland from SMA Maitreya Wad, sorry, SMA Maitreya Wira Palembang. Wow, wow, and now please, this is Amber to give the question. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm feeling very nervous, but I'm relieved now. Great topic, great content. Thank but you. Now I have an, another important question for you. How do you think AI, in, in specifically, will impact education in the future? Okay, thank you so much for the question. I'll try my best to answer it. So, in my opinion, in this digital era, AI has a very impactful thing on our education. However, I do feel like AI cannot replace the role of a teacher because AI or robots don't have the emotional support that all teachers have. So in my opinion, in the future, AI will not replace the role of a teacher. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much to Queen Issa Avlia Fiolen Palembang. Ayu ya panggilannya ya, Palembang. Ayu, Ayu, thank you Ayu. And also thank you, Mrs. Amber. And now, ladies and gentlemen, sequence number four, please welcome Keisha Silintan from Homeschooling Kak Seto, Surabaya. There are many things that make a great nation great. Strong economy, efficient government, harmony, power. But there's only one thing that makes it free, identity. Indonesia has been identified with a diverse range of beautiful heritage. This is our identity, yet how far has this taken us? What differs us to any other country, perhaps one that is developed? Are we ready to be a developed country? 
Greetings, everyone. My name is Keisha Klein, and I'm from HSKS Senior High, Surabaya. Today, I'll be discussing this one question. Are we ready to be a developed country? But before we proceed, let us praise the Almighty God who has given his blessings upon us all on this day. I would also like to thank the Honorable Judges and the Committee of EESC for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, developing and developed were a way of labeling countries by their political leanings during the Cold War. These terms, however, have taken on a different meaning now, becoming less politically inclined than they are economically. So naturally, more Western countries have always been developed. Then how are we different from them? Because according to the United Nations, to make a country develop, there are several factors. One of it is economic factor, which includes uh, income per capita, as well as the industrialization level. But there is also the human development index, which measures health, education, and literacy levels. By this, we can assess countries that have surpassed the standards, to name a famous few. Uh, Norway, Iceland, Germany, China, US, UK, well, actually many countries. But now let's move on to the country that was once developing. A good example is Singapore. In the 1960s, Singapore was a small, sweltering island with high unemployment, poor infrastructure, and racial tensions. Today, Singapore is one of the wealthiest and most developed countries in the world. The question for long has been, can we achieve that same level of development? But now let's today ask ourselves, what happens then once we've succeeded? Indonesia is a canvas of rich and diverse culture that has been shaped by centuries of history and tradition across Aceh to Papua. Each region has its own customs, traditions, music, art, food. Maybe, you know, some that you can't find in some parts of the country, yet in others struggle not to find every half a mile. But most importantly, it is our values. Values such as politeness, religiosity, family values, respect for elders, values that are the heart of who we are. According to the World Bank's Doing Business Report, Indonesia's went from 114th to 73rd in only six years in terms of economics. Moreover, improvement of infrastructure, healthcare, and education have spiked in recent years, as is further proved by our GDP that has consistently grown at an average rate of 5% over the past decade, making it one of the fastest growing economies in the world. Indonesia becoming a developed country is starting to become not just a matter of ready or not, will it or won't it, but simply when. We are closer to it than we have ever been before. Though, are we also closer to it than we are to our own roots? As the world becomes more globalized and interconnected, there is a risk of losing our cultural identity especially among, well, us, younger generation, who are more exposed to it through the digital space. We see a growing trend of materialism and individualism, which can erode the values of morality, respect, civility, that have long been the backbone of Indonesian society. As we strive towards development that is inevitable, let us ensure that we do not forget who we are as a people and as a nation. One way to achieve this is through promoting cultural education and awareness. By incorporating this into the educational curriculums, we can ensure that the younger generation understands and appreciates the importance of our customs, traditions, values. But ultimately, it comes down to us, how we choose to interact and instill morals into our daily lives, into our very thoughts and doings. This is what truly matters. Let us strive to achieve the standard of becoming a developed country, not simply to surpass it, but to become open towards progress while being the country that people can land into and immediately figure, ah, I'm in Indonesia. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I'm Keisha Klintan saying thank you to all for your time. I hope it's been lightning, and I'm very glad to have brought this topic upon conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Keisha Selintan from Homeschooling Kak Seto, Surabaya. And now, please, Mr. Lee Norman Smith to give the question. Morning, Keisha. Morning, sir. Um, I'm not going to lie. You pretty much answered 
every question in your presentation in how you spoke. So you made my job very, very <laughs> difficult. Okay. But with all of the research that you have done to, to get this speech so perfect, you must have come across many horror stories in already developed countries. How could you ensure, if you were one of the leaders, how could you ensure that those immoralities become part of our social norms just like they have in developed countries? Thank you so much, sir, for the question. This is, uh, I feel like a very good question for me because this is exactly what I was talking about and the reason that this topic was very dear to me. Because Indonesia, as I said, is rich of beautiful heritage. And the only thing, in my opinion, that is stopping us is the lack of moral, the lack of education in the people, especially the younger generation. And as I've said, it has been well worsened by the development of technology and social media. It has been worsened. So the number one thing actually for Indonesia, if we are to be rated a developed country, is to make sure that, these, that this, especially in the younger generation, is lessened. And how can we do that? Again, that is through the government. We can do it through educational curriculums. And I'm actually very happy because now it is Merdeka curriculum. If you are not familiar with it, Merdeka curriculum uh, teaches more about moral and incorporating moral values into our day-to-day -day lessons. And I think that's very great. It's one step. It's one step to start this. And if we keep on continuing down this road and we can keep on developing this through the education, then it can be very great change and a very great chance for all of us. But most importantly, it, it, it comes down to us. It comes down to the younger generation ourselves and also everyone, everyone in this room, parents, teachers, everyone, because this is all our job. It's our children, it's our sisters and brothers. And it is our awareness that is more important here. Thank you. Very good, well done. Thank you so much, Keisha, for the answer. And also thank you so much, Mr. Lee Norman Smith for the question. And now, the last participant from Mantiga PK Kota Makassar, and she is Ratu Aulia Rahma. Honorable judges, the ladies and gentlemen, let's take a moment to think back on the events of 2020 to 2022. Lockdowns, social distancing, mask requirements, vaccination campaigns, and surviving a virus that not only impacted our physical health, but also our mental well-being, probably have been at the forefront of each of our minds. Some interesting research conducted by the Association of Psychiatrists came up with some alarming findings. They discovered that a startling 60% of the respondents whose ages range from 14 to 71 reported feeling depressed and anxious during the challenging moments. It only further demonstrates that the pandemic has affected our mental health regardless of age. From Mantiga Peka Makassar, I'm Ratu Aulia Rahma. Today, I want to focus on a particular issue. How the pandemic has affected the mental health of our younger generation. Why? Because it is crucial to prevent the negative things of the epidemic on future leaders who are represented by the young generation from burdening their mental health. Honorable judges, the ladies and gentlemen, when the pandemic first came out, we didn't think it would affect so much, right? As a student, I vividly remember my excitement when we were told about a two-week holiday. I had planned movies I wanted to watch, imagine lazy days in my bed, enjoying my favorite tunes, and even set aside time to indulge in my bookish hobbies. Oh, it felt like a paradise in my mind. But as the weeks went by, the length of the break suddenly increased to three months. 
This extension was still bearable up until it went on forever, forcing us to switch to early online classes. We were even forced to wear masks all the time, unable to go outside. And the idea of a vacation started to grow boring to me. And also, before the pandemic, we used to enjoy running into so many kind people throughout our day. But when the pandemic hit us really hard, it was extremely unexpected that we needed to stay at home all the time. Nearly all of our daily activities have moved online and it makes sense if we got tired of the same old pattern, which finally resulted in feelings of boredom and stress. Sadly, for some of us, the pandemic also triggered anxiety and depression. Therefore, it is important to recognize that these effects persist even, if, even after the pandemic has ended. We can't simply overlook this matter, so what missions should we undertake? Well, honorable judges, the ladies and gentlemen, the road starts with self-care, a notion that is sometimes overlooked but actually has the power to have a big impact on our, on our mental health. The, the method of self-care used by each person varies and is unique. It demands a deliberate approach, including paying attention to our physical surroundings and engaging in uplifting activities. Also, try to communicate your emotion as well. Because I am sure that the act of expressing our feelings will bring such a huge sense of relief. And sharing our emotions takes courage, but doing so demonstrates how we value ourselves. Therefore, I am convinced that we are capable for overcoming these difficulties the pandemic has brought about. Believe in ourselves all depends on us. Don't let a two-year-old incident hold us right back from moving forward because it's time for us to move past it. Thank you. It's very wonderful. Thank you so much. Wow. Mm, and now, please, Miss Naila to give the question for Ratu Aulia Rahma. Hi, Ratu. How are you feeling? I'm pretty nervous, but... Bismillah, I can. I think you did great, so you can take a breath. <laughs> so my question is, these days, mental health in Indonesia still carries a certain stigma. So my question is, how would you destigmatize mental health issues among Indonesian society? I'm sorry, I can't really hear it. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So my question is, these days, mental health issues like anxiety and depression, they still carry some sort of stigma in Indonesian society. So how would you destigmatize these kinds of mental health issues in Indonesia? How do I? Destigmatize. How do you remove the stigma uh, of these how, mental health how issues? How do I remove the stigma of yes. the mental health, of, of the mental issue? I'm yes. sorry. So thank you so much for your nice question. So I will answer that. How do I will destigmatize the stereotype of the mental issue is I will make a friendly environment that where we could feel safe to share our feelings and also uh, so uh, when they feel safe they could slowly to share their emotions, so uh, it could show that not all of the people with mental health issues is like crazy or something like that, but they are normal like us. They just give, they just given like a struggle from God. So I know we can ho hold them and together we can make them feel better. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ratu, for the answer. And so, thank you so much, Ka Naila, for the question. Wow, she's the last participant in English Speech Contest 2023 from category SMA. Please give applause to all the participants. It's very amazing, wonderful. 
speech. And now ladies and gentlemen, Bapak dan Ibu hadirin sekalian teman-teman semuanya. Kita akan lanjut lagi nanti jam 1 siang at 1 o'clock, okay? And we will back to listen the another speech from SMK. So, saya ingin informasi sebelum dahulu untuk teman-teman semua yang masih berada di sini, lagi-lagi isoma buat jalan-jalan sekitar, lihat-lihat dulu aja. Ada pameran karya seni, yaitu memamerkan karya finalis dari lomba dan juga kontes Erlangga Art Awards 2023. Yang terdiri atas karya seni instalasi, seni lukis, fotografi, video dokumenter dan juga puisi. Lalu ada pameran buku terdiri atas penerbit Erlangga dan juga imprint by Eureka Book House, UI Publishing. Dan juga ada booth sponsor dan tenan terdiri atas Gelora Aksara Pratama atau Suma, TikTok, Master Discount, Race, Jajah.id, Torch, Einstein Science Project, Gelang Kita, Sidu, Erklika, dan juga Hokpen. Ada acara harian juga meliputi workshop, talk show, lomba dan kontes, perjukan seni dan budaya. Lalu besok adalah malam penghargaan untuk menentukan siapakah yang akan menjadi pemenang Erlangga Art Awards 2023. Baik teman-teman semua, kalau tadi kita telah melihat bersama-sama penampilan dari jenjang SD, SMP, dan SMA. Kita akan break sejenak dan nanti kita akan kembali lagi pada pukul 1 untuk melihat teman-teman dari SMK. Dan juga saya ingin memberikan informasi bahwa ruang makan siang ada di UG. Ruang makan siang ada di UG dan panitia akan mengarahkan peserta untuk makan siang. Dan juga teman-teman semua yang ada di YouTube channel Erlangga Inspirasi, jangan lupa buat tetap stay tune di sini. Jangan lupa makan juga. Nanti jam 1 kita akan sama-sama kembali lagi di sini melihat rangkaian kecuruan acara di sini tentunya bersama dengan teman-teman SMK kita dalam acara Erlangga English Speech Contest 2023. Sampai jumpa jam 1 semuanya.
You have a look around here in Museum National already? Not yet? Not yet? Okay. okay, and I would like to say welcome also to Sahabat Erlangga in YouTube channelnya Erlangga. Halo teman-teman semua all over Indonesia, please welcome back to our Erlangga English Speech Contest 2023. After we all seen the, to the all participants in level SD, SMP, SMA, and now it's time to level level SMK. Are you ready, friends? Yes. Okay. So now, without any further ado, please welcome seconds number one. Farilino Arfia Atmajaya from SMKN7 Semarang. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Shalom, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, and Salam Kebajikan. What I just said a second ago is just a simple example on how I respect the religious diversity in Indonesia. Indonesia is a country built on diversity. The motto, Bineka Tunggal Ika, indicates how we are able to unite as one, despite all the differences that we have. However, do you know that there are still many incidents that happen because of the lack of respect for diversity? One of the cases that stuck on me was the attack on Papuan student in Surabaya, which caused riots and chaos in other parts of Indonesia. Then, what should we do to cope with this problem? Well, we're going to discuss it later in our talk, but before going any further, let me introduce myself. Hi everyone, my name is Paralino Arfiat Majaya, and I'm from Vocational High School 7 Semarang, and now let us back to our talk. So what is it, ladies and gentlemen? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we can see that diversity is a beautiful blessing from God. It is like a beautiful flower garden. And each flower in this garden represents a different kind of uniqueness and beauty. And for humans like us, diversity creates beauty in our lives, giving us color and uniqueness to each individual. Therefore, we have to see diversity as a source of harmony instead of a conflict. Appreciating diversity is paramount in our lives. But why? When we are open to understanding other people's view, we will also better understand our values and belief. It will help us grow to be as a wise, more and more tolerant individuals. And tolerance is the key to live in peace and harmony. Do you guys agree with what I'm saying right now? But then, how do we value diversity and maintain the existing unity? Well, there are two major points to make this work. First is to respect the differences that exist around us. It started by doing simple things, such as normalizing differences and not judging people by any kind of stereotypes that exist in the society. We also have to respect everyone's belief and religion, especially their worship activities. As an example, let's take a look on the tolerance of our fellas in Bali which is so strong between the Hindus and Muslims. With their strong tolerance and respect, they maintain everyone's right to worship according to their religion. This kind of respect and tolerance that should be an example throughout the Indonesia. And secondly, is to preserve other cultures. It, started, it can be started by anything, maybe with their foods, their dances, their clothing, their languages, or maybe their accent, or anything else. It can be started from anything. And this way, it will eventually help us to understand and appreciate the diversity of the cultural heritage that exists in our nation. One good example has been shown to us brilliantly by our former president, Mr. Insinyur Sukarno. Yes, Insinyur Sukarno himself has shown to us 
how to respect the religious diversity in Indonesia. You see, the Istiqlal Mosque in this Jakarta, yes, exactly, the city where we are right now, it was built face to face with the Cathedral Church. And do you know that there is a tunnel connecting these two buildings called the Trawangan Silaturahmi? Well, you can check it by yourself later. Bung Karno had built it and shown to us that diversity and differences has never been a problem to live side by side. And it costs nothing but respect for the differences that we have. Ladies and gentlemen, right here, right now, I invite all of you to value our diversity as our strength, not our weakness anymore. Let's build a nation where every single individual is respected, accepted, and valued without any exception. And last but not least, by respecting diversity, we will create a more peaceful, harmonious, and beautiful Indonesia for everyone and every single of our next generations. Thank you for your time and attention. I'm Fadel Lino, and see you guys next time. Yay! Thank you so much, Fadel Lino. Arfia Atmajaya from SMKN 7 Semarang, Semarang, mana suaranya? Woo! Okay, and now please, Mrs. Amber, to give a question for Farelino Arfia Atmajaya. Hi, how are you? Uh, I'm good. Yeah, I'm really good. Good, great to see you here today. Okay, here is my question for you. Okay. How do you think cultural and religious diversity can be further promoted in schools in Indonesia? Uh, excuse me, can you repeat your question? Sure. Uh, how do you think, how do you think? cultural and religious diversity can be further promoted at schools here in Indonesia. Verbal promotion. Yeah, promoted, enhanced, further developed. Uh, promoted in school. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How, di uh, how the culture and religious can be promoted in school. Yeah. yeah. How can we enhance? How can we? How can we improve? Oh, improve. Mm -mm. Everyone's understanding of cultural and religious diversity and build tolerance from an early age in school. Okay. So what roles does, uh, what role does the education system have and what roles do the schools themselves and the educators have in, in promoting this and helping students to understand more about tolerance and diversity? Yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you for your question. So I believe what can be done uh, for the education to improve the tolerance and the respect towards the diversity and uh, uh, what is it? The diversity and the some kind of uh, religion in Indonesia. Yeah, it can be done by uh, the educational system, uh, which we already know now. Uh, we already have uh, the lesson called PPKN, Pendidikan Keluarga Negara Negara. Now, which uh, which in this lesson, it's uh, we are learning about. Uh, our nation and then our diversity and our uh, the diversity of our religion uh, also and uh, what exactly is that uh, will mostly improve or significantly improve the tolerance and the what is it like tolerance and respect towards the diversity I believe that it is a real action not only a lesson uh, that written on the books or be written on the books but some real actions like, uh, what is it like, um, art, art expo, or uh, uh, cultural art expo like that? Uh, uh, like um, in Indonesia, it's called pentaseni. Uh, um, uh, like pentaseni uh, from from uh, every culture of Indonesia, from every culture in Indonesia. Uh, I think it will be more effective and significantly improve the tolerance and uh, the respect towards the diversity in Indonesia, uh, mostly to the cultural heritage in Indonesia mostly. Because with, uh, with some real action, the students will feel and uh, know how it feels to have something cultural like them, how to feel, how to act like them, like that. Uh, I think that's all for me, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Farelino Arfia Atmajaya from SMKN 7 Semarang. And also thank you so much, Mrs. Amber, for the question. And now, the sequence number two from SMKN 4, 
Malang, please welcome Naura Cahaya Akila. Ladies and gentlemen, is it possible for Indonesia to become a developed country? Are we really ready for it? Those questions have been swirling in my mind for a long time. And today, in this special occasion, we will find the key to answer those questions. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm Nora Chaya Akila from Public Vocational High School for Malang. Ladies and gentlemen, currently Indonesia is a developing country, working toward to become a developed country. But before we go deeper into this topic, I would like to ask everyone in this room, do you know what exactly developed country is? Well, if you think that developed country is a rich country who have advanced economy, they have modern technological infrastructure and also high quality of life, then you are right. But because there is a indicator such as GDP, gross domestic product per capita, there are top five best developed country, namely Norway, Ireland, Switzerland, Germany, and Hong Kong. I know everyone uh, that Indonesia is a rich country. I mean, we have a lot of natural resources. However, to become a developed country, it depends on the quality of our human resources. And that is the problem. <laughs> so, our human resources right now, we are, we can say, not fully prepared to become a developed country. The main reason is because the majority of Indonesian people still have a mindset called fixed mindset. People with fixed mindset, they will believe that everything is set and cannot be changed and they don't care about growth but if we want to be a developed country it depends on us so yeah that is why we need a new uh, solution that is why we need mindset called growth mindset people with growth mindset they will believe that our brain and our talent are just a starting point of human abilities which is can be developed through dedication and hard work. So right now we can learn maybe from Germany. Yeah, something that makes Germany become a developed country is because they have entrepreneurial spirit and they have the one and only great growth mindset, I mean. So yeah, they encourage small businesses and startup to make an environment where new ideas can be flourish. And yeah, it can be proven from Berlin. Right now, Berlin become the center of tech startup and creative enterprises. And they attract many talents from around the world and investment from around the world to put their money to Berlin. And I believe that actually we, Indonesia, we can be like Germany as developed country because we have many, many, many great youth. We can take example from Putri Nabila. She is the founder of a brand clothing called Our Trashes. Yes. So right now, Putri Nabila is a Gen Z and she have a growth mindset. She make like about 60 million rupees per month from her businesses. And this is a tangible example that actually we as Indonesian people, especially Gen Z, we can be a great entrepreneur. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, let's be part of this journey. We are actually, we as Gen Z especially, we will be the future leader of Indonesia. And it is our responsibility, right, to make Indonesia to become better. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, again, let's be part of this journey. We will be an agent of change. I think that's all for me. And I will ask again the same question. Are we really ready to become, to make Indonesia become a developed country? Well, oh, can I hear again? 
Yes, the answer is yes. Thank you very much. That's all for me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nora Cahaya Akila from SMKN 4 Malang. <laughs> Arema. So, ladies and gentlemen, please, Mr. Lee Norman Smith, the guest. Good Give afternoon. The Good afternoon. Um, quick question for you. Yes. What do you think is currently Indonesia's greatest weakness and why? What do you think is Indonesia's greatest weakness and why? Okay, I will answer your question. Thank you very much for the question. It is a really good, really good answer. I'm <laughs> sorry. So, I think the biggest weakness of Indonesian people that makes us become a developing country, not yet become a developed country, is because, as I said earlier, it's about our mindset. So, our mindset is the foundation of everything, right? Even if we want to have a competition right now, if we don't have uh, the right mindset, like we are not optimists, then we cannot be anything. And it seems like as uh, a country. So that is why our mindset right now, the majority of Indonesian is fixed mindset. And this is something that we should change. That is why right now I make this speech. I want to everyone open your eyes, open your mind that actually we can be like other developed country. I think that's all for me. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone. so much. Naura Cahaya Akila for the answer and also thank you so much Mr. Lee Norman Smith for the question. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Karen Audi Januarti Putri P dari SMKN 3 Kota Bekasi. Wow. Good afternoon everyone, the respectful judges, committees and audiences. Hello, my name is Karen Audi from Vocational High School 3, Bekasi. What is your favorite subject at school? For me, it's sport lesson. Why? Because not only doing exercises such as badminton or football, but also playing games and interacting with my friends are pleasant moments. Then, if I'm tired, it's time for me to look for my girl squad to rest together, share our story, our feelings, or <clears throat> even our crush. <laughs> we laugh together, but sometimes we cry as well. For me, having a quality time with friends are the best place to share our problems because we support each other so we can be strong again. But then, suddenly, the pandemic came. In 2020, the virus called COVID-19 appeared and locked down our country. We couldn't go to school or even met our friends anymore. It's hard to socialize because our interaction is limited. Ladies and gentlemen, talking about COVID-19, which is identical with using masks, washing hands more often, and making social distance, yeah, we are isolated. Not only isolated in making relationship, but also in learning and working. For me, as a vocational high school student, it's okay, it's fine if I should learn by myself using smartphone. But how about elementary school students? They feel difficult to understand the materials. Well, to support their learning, parents will be the best partner in this case. It means parents, especially mother, has double jobs as a parent and as a teacher. Can you imagine how the parents' mental health? Some parents keep complaining and get frustrated because it's not easy to teach their children. Moreover, they must spend money to provide internet to support their children's study. It's okay if their finance is stable, but how about if they come from poor family and lost their job? It is high pressure for them to think about their daily needs and also their children's school needs. Ladies and gentlemen, all problems we face during pandemic extremely break our mental health. Some people are looking fine outside but crying inside. So it should be balanced between physical health and mental health. 
If our mental health is good, it will affect our immunity. To keep our immunity, we need to control our emotion and our mind. Here, I would like to give you some tips to control it. First, we can do something that we like. For example, you like cooking. You can start cooking some foods, and if it works, you can open up a business and get income from it. Plus, you enjoy the process, so you can be happier. The second point is, ask for help. If you feel worried, anxious, or stressed, please don't just keep it in your heart. Don't just stay silent, because that hurt feeling is like a bomb. If we don't turn it off, we just wait for the time to blow up, and it can hurt ourselves or even people around us. But how about if we don't have anyone to trust or lean on? It's okay. We can use smartphone as our friends by using it to find some motivation videos or inspiring quotes on social media. Trust me, it works. We will get a new insights, a new mindset, and a new inspiration. Remember, we have to keep our mental health. <sighs> Happily, pandemic is over. Now, for all the people in this room, we are the pandemic survivor. Parents, children, you and me, we struggle a lot during pandemic. But here, it proves that we did it. We can get through all those feelings. Let's give applause for all of us. Yes. We have to be proud of ourselves. We must love ourselves. Whoever you are, you deserve to be loved and to be happy. So, in the end of my short speech, I would like to remind you that happiness starts from us. If our mental is healthy, our body must be healthy too. So let's find our own happiness. I'm Karen Audi. Stay healthy, be happy, and don't forget to smile. I think that's all from me. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Karen Audi Januari Putri. What a wonderful speech. Thank you so much. And now, please, Kaka and Ella to give a... Yes. Question. Can you hear me? Yes, I can yes. hear you. <laughs> How are you doing? Can you hear I'm me? doing fine, so very good. <laughs> so your speech was very enthusiastic. It was hey. very contagious. So, <laughs> Thank you so much. Good job. Thank you. So my question is, how can schools promote mental health awareness for students while still maintaining productivity among students? Can you repeat again? Yes. So how can schools promote mental health awareness towards students while maintaining productivity among students. Okay, how uh, the school uh, make our mental health is important, maybe like that, yeah? Yeah. How, how can you find the balance between being aware of your mental health mm -hmm. and being productive oh. at schools? Yeah. Okay, I think I remember uh, one of the subjects in my school, it's called BK, Bimbingan Counseling. Mm -hmm. So I think it is very good that we need uh, a person in our school, like teacher, if we have struggle in our homework, maybe, yeah, we can, we can um, finish it. But if you feel struggle or stress, we can talk to our, our teacher, our, um, what is called, uh, psycho, uh, their psychiatrist, right? So uh, we can talk to them and also we have to, to finish our homework. But if our field struggle, we can talk to them, uh, to our teacher or our family, our circle, our friends. So it is important for our mentality, our, yeah, our mental healthy, we must to have someone. We have to have, uh, we have a friend, we must to have a friend. I think that's all from me. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thank very, you much, very much, Karen Audi from Bekasi. Baik kepada Ibu hadirin sekalian, saya ingin mengingatkan untuk teman-teman semua yang ada di belakang, mohon izin untuk tidak bersuara dengan sangat keras karena sedang mengganggu, nanti akan mengganggu adik-adik kita yang akan melakukan speech ya. Jadi dimohon untuk suaranya yang di belakang dikecilkan sedikit. Baik. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rachel Emilio from SMK Methodist Charles Swissly Medan. Only when the last tree has died and the last river been poisoned and the last fish been caught will we realize we cannot eat money. 
Today, the earth is a place where skyscrapers, instead of trees, scatter across the globe, and the sky lit by city lights instead of stars. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rachel from Metrish Charles Wesley, Medan. For those of you who have been to Medan, you must know how climate in Medan is. Humid. At its peak, temperature can go up to 36 degrees Celsius. The situation is even worse in other parts of the world, where temperature skyrockets to 40 degrees Celsius. In comparison, a person with a body temperature of 40 degrees Celsius might suffer from brain damage. Then how can we let our Earth deteriorate to the extent of crisis? Ladies and gentlemen, the motive behind our jeopardized Earth is because people never cared. In the 1800s, humans waltzed in mansions built upon the lives of a million trees. And in the 2020s, we feast on meals grown upon corrupted forests. The thing is, humans have always put themselves above the environment and fellow inhabitants of the planet. And what is worse is the fact that we refuse to change. We sacrifice nature for the sake of temporary pleasure and gains. For example, we dismiss the importance of a healthy marine life for a few barrels of gasoline. And why care about the ozone layer when you can have a few minutes of air conditioning? We have been dancing over the deathbed of our dying Mother Earth. So, are we going to cover our ears when our brothers and sisters cry out for help? Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention to me when I say that climate change trails behind us. It haunts every decision we make in our daily lives, from the moment you choose to leave the lights on during daytime to the moment you choose to support cutting down trees for the sake of cheaper produce. We contribute to the decaying aura of planet when we choose to be powerless when we, in fact, have the power to make a change. Ladies and gentlemen, just because we are ordinary people, just because we are students, doesn't mean that our actions don't matter. Remember, it takes only a tiny spark of courage to start a revolution. And that tiny spark of courage exists in every one of us. And when we take these tiny sparks together, we get a beautiful constellation of bravery. We don't have to do it all at once, because as we all know, Rome wasn't built in just one day. So. Here comes the award-winning question. What can we do to help the environment? Well, let's start by cutting down unnecessary purchases. Not only will it save your wallets, it will also save the environment. It's time to stop overflowing the earth with excess garbage. Another approach we can do to prevent more and more garbage from going to landfills is by breathing a new life into the things we consider waste. Donating and upcycling are two very popular methods we can do to give something a second chance at life. For example, food waste can become compost, a broken bed frame can make an adorable coffee table, and the clothes that don't fit you anymore, they are the best, because they can always be someone else's prom dress. Appreciating our planet is simple. All it takes is for us to respect nature just the way it is. Not everything in the world is crafted for us humans. So let us learn to be compassionate for other creatures living together with us on Earth. Climate change is something that will inevitably approach us. But when we think of it, the Earth is a wonderful place to live on. So why don't we cherish it for as long as we can? Ladies and gentlemen, as I bid my farewell, allow my speech to ring a bell to care for our planet well, as it is not another thing to sell. Roses are red because the golden stars are us. Once again, my name is Rachel. Medan Horas. Horas! Luar biasa sekali. Thank you so much, Rachel Emilio from SMK Methodist Charles Wesley Medan. Medan mana suaranya? Horas. Okay, so please use this ember for the question.
Sorry, I was paying attention to the very big Horas from down the back there. Yeah. Horas, my dad. Hi, how are you? Uh, I'm, I was very nervous, uh, <laughs> and I'm still very nervous. So, please. Okay, so you brought up a really, really important topic today. Yeah? Yes. And I'm you. really glad that someone discussed it. Now, it's 2023. We have a lot of problems. Yes, yeah. very many. Exactly. So I'm interested in your opinion. Aside from climate change, so not including climate change, what do you consider to be the greatest threat to humanity and the planet? Ooh, the greatest threat towards humanity and the planet? Mm -mm. In 2023, as of this year. Well, allow me to start with a simple, a simple thank you for the inquiry, Ms. Ember. Well, I believe the greatest threat towards humanity and our planet are humans ourselves. Uh, as we all know, humans are creatures of destruction, but we are also creatures of innovation, creativity. But going back to destruction, humans are very prone to wars, fights, discrimination, and many other forms of crimi criminal acts. So we definitely have to work on ourselves. We have to set our priorities straight if we don't want to lead our Earth to a point of destruction, which is also a point of no return. So yes, to conclude my answer, the greatest threat towards humanities and the planet Earth is humans themselves or ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, very good answer. Thank you so much, Rachel Emilio from SMK Methodist Charles Wesley Medan. Wah, wow, teman-teman semua yang ada di sini luar biasa sekali. Kita sudah melihat empat partisipan, empat peserta yang telah hadir dan sesaat lagi sama-sama kita akan menyaksikan penampilan atau speech yang terakhir. Dari seseorang yang jauh tentunya, tapi sebelum itu saya mau sapa-sapa dulu teman-teman semua yang ada di YouTube channelnya Erlangga. Halo semuanya. Hai. Wah senang sekali, antusiasme yang sangat luar biasa sekali. Jangan lupa buat dukung ya teman-teman kalian semua yang ada di sini dengan cara kalian bisa foto saat mereka lagi speech kemudian juga di tag di Instagramnya at buku Erlangga nanti abadikan momen-momen yang seru-seru banget di sini pastinya dan kita lihat nanti betapa kalian mensupport teman-teman kalian semua di sini apalagi di seluruh Indonesia. Uh, dan tentunya teman-teman semua setelah ini jangan kemana-mana karena kita akan bagi-bagi kuis. Uh, pastinya ada hadiah yang sangat menarik banget. Jadi silahkan yang mau ikutan boleh banget buat teman-teman di sini jangan kehilangan kesempatan. Jadi tetap stay di sini karena sama-sama kita akan saksikan bersama di sini penampilan terakhir the last participant from SMK Pariwisata Harapan dan Pasar Jennifer Sully. Raise your hand if you love going to school. No. Okay, I can see only a few students really being honest with themselves. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jennifer Celine, and I love going to school. Just to meet my friends, not to study. Because when I go to school, I sit down and I start listening to the teacher talking and explaining all over again. And sometimes it feels really boring and not engaging. But when COVID-19 held us hostage at our own houses, school system was changing. Virtual classes were made, we got exposed to technology, and we found out that we could learn anywhere and anytime we want, even with our friends from different places. When I hear the phrase, school of the future, the first thing that comes to my mind was technology. Why don't we use technology to help us in learning? Using videos to explain materials, using online game-based learning platforms to understand a concept, and even using virtual reality, or VR. Virtual reality lets students learn through experience. 
using virtual or augmented reality let students know more things. For example, they can know, they can delve deep into complex concepts and experience learning directly in the palm of their hands and all from a safe, secure, and familiar environment. The classroom, obviously. And we can also use AI like ChatGPT. I even wrote, ChatGPT, please write me down five minute speech about school of the future. Boop. <laughs> Relax, I didn't use it. This is my original speech. Not only that, in the school of the future, the government shall eliminate unnecessary materials being taught to students and focus on running the relevant skills. For example, why would you need to memorize the perimeter of a circle in the inner part of a basketball court? Traditional learning system is too theoretical and lack of practical studies. In my opinion, future education should focus on learning soft skills and hard skills that are relevant for future career that we want to pursue. That is why adding internship to our curriculum is very important because we can real, have real life experience on applying our skills. For instance, now my major is business, tourism business management. And now I learn more about languages such as Indonesian, English, Mandarin, Japanese, and Germany to develop my communication skills. Do you know that there are 60 million children in Indonesia drop out of school or not attending school? This is because of poverty. These children cannot read and write. This is the importance of the government's role in the school of future. The school of future need to be free of fees and charges so that everyone, the rich and the poor, can access education equally. This will increase more educated people that can help developing this country. For example, decreasing the percentage of homelessness, starvation, and also protecting the environment. Ladies and gentlemen, the school of future only can happen if we all start taking initiative utilizing technology to help learning engaging, and also learning soft skills and hard skills that are relevant for us. And the last but not least, giving equal access to everyone. That is the school of the future I envision. And when that happens, I can proudly say, I love going to school. That's all for me, thank you. Thank you so much, Jennifer Celine. And now, please, Mr. Lean or Wayne Smith to give the question. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Lee. Um, just before I give your question, what was your study, what are you studying in SMK? Oh, in my vocational high school right now, my major is tourism business management. Now, that leads me to my question. With yourself being in a very public dominated industry, tourism, you mentioned VR. VR, yes. Do you not believe that VR could take your job and make it no longer <laughs> necessary? So, is VR a help or is VR a hindrance in your opinion? Thank you for the question, Mr. Lee. In my opinion, virtual reality is really important for my major because my major is for tourism business management. It means I need to attract tourists to go to places that they want to visit. And I can show them through the VR and tell them, if you want to really feel it, you can go with me. And before I can go to that places, if I have my economy, that's not really stable, I can see that places to VR so that I can know the situation before I try to attract tourists to go there. So it's really helping my major. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jennifer Shalin, and also Mr. Lee. Thank you so much for the question. Baik, teman-teman semua, adik-adik, please give applause to the all participants. Very, very smart, wonderful speech, amazing story, and also I'm very proud of you guys. And now, sekarang, kita bakalan ada kuis. Siapa yang mau hadiah? Gak ada yang mau hadiah nih. <laughs> Siapa yang mau hadiah? Nanti langsung aja angkat tangan ya teman-teman semua. Bapak dan Ibu juga kalau mau ikutan boleh banget. Gak hanya anak-anak aja. Bapak dan Ibu kalau ikutan boleh banget. Karena pertanyaan ini gampang-gampang banget. Tapi sebelum itu, saya mau kasih tahu dulu. Ini kita ada... Skrip nih dan juga dari RCTI Plus untuk yang mana sponsor kita yang sangat luar biasa ini. Yaitu sahabat Elangga, aku mau kasih info nih buat kalian yang suka bosen, gak ada hiburan. Bingung mau ngapain, aku kasih tahu bakal ada aplikasi hiburan gratis dijamin kalian gak bakal bosen. Dan bingung lagi, aku kenalin aplikasi RCTI Plus. Yaitu RCTI Plus ini merupakan super app, kali, super app yang bisa kalian tonton, baca. Dengar dan juga tenar lengkap, pokoknya banyak banget yang bakalan kami bisa dapetin di sana. Jadi buruan buat teman-teman semua di install dulu, RCTI Plus-nya. Dan juga kalau sudah di install, ada fitur video plus bisa nonton live RCTI dan juga GTV, MSC TV dan juga iNews. Dan banyak konten eksklusif lainnya, lalu nanti di fitur News Plus, kamu bisa baca berita dan infotainment terupdate. Ada juga fitur audio plus di sini nanti teman-teman bisa bakal dengerin musik, podcast, audio series dan radio di seluruh Indonesia. Dan yang terakhir bisa jadi tenar juga atau terkenal juga dengan mengupload video bakat kan teman-teman nanti, nanti kalau misalkan memang pengen ada video bisa dicek di YouTube ya kan nanti langsung aja diupload di RCTI Plus karena bisa banget di sini kan menunjukkan bakat kalian di sini karena ada di fitur Hot Plus ya. Pencarian bakat online berhadiah jutaan rupiah. Siapa tahu rezeki teman-teman kan dengan mengupload speech kalian di tentunya di RCTI Plus. Lalu juga di sini nanti aku bakalan kasih games-games lagi buat sahabat Elangga semua di sini. Pastinya tapi yang pertama aku mau kasih tahu nih. Ada yang tahu nggak apa tagline super app RCTI Plus? Ada yang tahu? Boleh banget kalau mau dicek-cek dulu. Satu menit aku kasih waktu, satu menit. Apa tagline super app RCTI Plus? Yang pertama, A, satu aplikasi semua hiburan. Yang B, satu aplikasi untuk hiburan favorit. Yang C, satu aplikasi hiburan lengkap. Ada yang tahu A, B, atau C? Ya, oke boleh. Pertanyaannya adalah apa tagline super app RCTI Plus? Yang pertama, satu aplikasi semua hiburan itu yang A. Yang B, satu aplikasi untuk hiburan favorit. Yang C, satu aplikasi untuk hiburan lengkap. Ada yang tahu? This is A. Yay, that's true. Pradela, you are the winner. Bisa dipakai langsung stopinya sayang, bentar doang buat foto. <laughs> okay, congratulations. And for the next question, di super app RCTI Plus bisa ngapain aja? Di super app RCTI Plus bisa ngapain aja? Tadi kakak udah ngomong kan, apa aja bisa ngapain aja? Yang pertama, nonton. Belaja, belanja, baca, dengar. Yang B, nonton, baca, dengar, tenar. Yang C, nonton, delivery, dengar, tenar. Gimana, gimana ada yang tahu? Oke, okay, benar. Nonton, baca, dengar, tenar. Selamat. Uh. Tenang, masih ada beberapa pertanyaan lagi, tenang aja. Kita bagi-bagi dulu. Yang selanjutnya, di RCTI Plus kalian bisa nonton live TV. Sebutkan, gampang nih, gampang banget. 
Live TV apa aja yang ada di RCTI Plus? Yang A, RCTI and MNC TV. B, RCTI aja. C, RCTI, GTV, MNC TV, and I News. C. Yay, C. betul. Congratulations. Gampang kan pertanyaannya? Silahkan berikan hadiahnya. Oke, okay, ada lagi nih. Di RCTI Plus, kalian bisa tenar juga loh. Sebutkan fitur untuk menjadi tenar atau terkenal. Tadi aku udah bilang juga. A, News Plus. B, Audio Plus. And C, Hot Plus. Hadiahnya apa selanjutnya? Wah buku dan topi apa buku nih? Kamu mau yang mana? Buku apa topi? Pick one, pick one. Topi aja, bukunya udah banyak di rumah ya. <laughs> Oke, okay, congratulations. Dan sekarang saya ada satu pertanyaan terakhir yang pastinya semuanya tahu dan tadi kita udah bahas juga dan tadi kita. Ngomongin hadiah dari sponsor kita yang sangat luar biasa sekali. Dan sebutkan nama sponsor kita tersebut. Oke. Okay. Congratulations. Selamat. Gampang banget kan langsung angkat tangan RCTI Plus. Tepuk tangan dia untuk RCTI Plus. Luar biasa sekali. Keren banget. Tentunya juga kita bakal bagi-bagi hadiah lagi banyak banget sekarang. Jadi siap-siap, adik-adik yang di sini jangan malu-malu dong. Langsung angkat tangan aja semuanya kalau misalkan mau ya. Dan pasti pertanyaan gampang-gampang banget. Kalau tadi kita bahas RCTI Plus, sekarang aku mau bahas-bahas yang lain lagi. Berapa lama? <laughs> Langsung nih. Langsung deg-degan nih. Oh ya tadi mau ngomong apa ya? Lupa ya. <laughs> Berapa lama Erlangga Art Awards 2023 dilaksanakan? Berapa hari totalnya? 13 hari. Selamat tante dari mana namanya? Nama dari mana? Dari siapa? Dari? siapa? dari? Jakarta. Dukung siapa di sini tante? Dukung. Oh pengunjung, wow keren banget pengunjung menonton di sini semuanya di Erlangga English Speech Contest 2023. Selamat tante, tantenya malu gak mau pakai mic. Oke, okay, kita lanjut lagi untuk pertanyaan-pertanyaan selanjutnya. Ada yang tahu nama Instagramnya Erlangga? Buku Erlangga, betul sekali. Halo Tante dari mana? Dari Palembang. Palembang dukung siapa di sini? Guinessa. Guinessa. Mana Guinessa? Mana Guinessa? Eh ke toilet Sama ya. Sama Seli. Seli. Ada dua. Ada dua. Iya Palembang ada dua yang Tante, masuk nasional. Temennya, ibunya, atau? gurunya. Oh gurunya yes. the teacher. The teacher yes. Wow. Pinter-pinter banget ya pastinya ya bangga banget dong jadi seorang guru ya. Yes. Guru ya. And hopefully. We will be the champion. Wow, okay. benar-benar optimis okay. sekali. Yes. Thank you, Thank you. congratulations, Miss. Oke, okay, kita lanjut lagi. Tentang hadiahnya masih ada 100 lagi ya kayak. <laughs> Banyak ya. Oke, okay. kasih tahu lagi apa ya. Gampang banget, ada yang mau bisikin saya ini pertanyaannya apa. <laughs> Request sendiri. Oke, okay. ini gampang banget juga. Sebutkan. Dua media partner kita. Ada yang tahu? Dua media partner. Media partner, baca aja di situ ada saya. Ada saya di sana. Yes, yes. Tante. Apa? RCTI sama iNews. Yeah, benar. Langsung kita berikan hadiah. Oh, salah ya? Media partner. Media partnernya di bawah, tante lagi ulang-ulang. Itu loh yang di bawah. RCTI Plus sama Event Jakarta. 
Iya, event Jakarta bener. Agak di be- agak bedanya ya CTI Plus ya berarti ya. Oke, okay. congrats Tante. Tenang yang lainnya masih banyak hadiahnya ya, masih banyak hadiahnya. Kita lanjut lagi pertanyaan selanjutnya. Dari tahun berapa? Aduh langsung nih, aduh aduh apaan nih? Dari tahun berapa Erlangga Art Awards diadakan? 2012! Salah. <laughs> Bunda teriak-teriak ya, salah kak. Salah, iya tante. 2011. 2011, salah lagi. 2013, salah lagi. 2018? Erlangga Awards. Dibu berapa? 51. Aduh, itu saya. Ya Tante? 2012. 2012, 19, 19. Oh, Erlangga Award kan? Erlangga, Erlangga oh, ya. Art Awards. Art Award yes. aja? Dua-dua. Betul! Emang yang tadi saya maksud itu apa ya? Saya aja lupa Tante. Oh iya, sorry, sorry. Aku lihat ke belakang. Nanti aku pilih ya. Masih banyak hadiah, tenang aja. Seru-seruan aja kita di sini. Kita bagi, bakal-bakal bagi hadiah. Ini gampang banget lagi. Sebutkan dengan siapa Erlangga di event ini berkolaborasi. Wah, 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 wah. Ya kamu apa? Apa? Iya betul. Saya kaget sendiri. TikTok, TikTok. Saya kaget sendiri. Keren banget Keisha. Oke. Oh, you you need a head? Ani. Oh, oke. Okay. So congratulations. <laughs> Dia pengen banget topi ternyata dari tadi langsung angkat tangan makanya heboh banget ya. <laughs> oke, okay, teman-teman semua para ibu semuanya kita lanjut lagi. Masih ada berapa lagi, Kak? Dua lagi, teman-teman semua masih ada dua lagi. Ini kesempatan kalian. Aku nanya dulu aja ya, daripada nanti salah ya kan. <laughs> Sejak kapan penerbit Erlangga ada? Ayo. Eh Bapak silakan boleh. Berapa? 19? 52? Betul? Betul! Wah, 1952 itu udah lama banget ternyata ya. Adik-adik di sini yang paling muda umurnya berapa? Ada yang tahun 2000, kamu dari berapa saya? Berapa? 2009, Erlangga sudah ada. Eh, eh, kamu berapa saya? Enggak, akhirnya tahun berapa? Enggak tahu kayaknya dia. Tante, anaknya umur berapa? 2013 lahirnya, oke, okay. dia nggak tahu lahir tahun berapa. It's okay baby, it's okay. Oh oke okay, oke, okay. mungkin nggak tahu bahasa Indonesia belum tahu paham ya kayaknya. Oke, okay. kak adiknya aja lahir tahun 2013, Erlangga udah ada 1952. Tepuk tangan boleh dong buat Erlangga, keren banget. Erlangga ini itu buku dari zaman saya kecil sampai saya lulus sekolah selalu pakainya Erlangga kan. Keren banget pokoknya. Oke pertanyaan terakhir. Satu pertanyaan terakhir. Ada yang mau request lagi? Di rangkaian acara Erlangga Art World Awards 2023, ada pameran apa aja? You already got your head. <laughs> Next, no more heads, okay? Yes, baby. Karya 
muda Indonesia? Karya muda Indonesia? Karya muda Indonesia? No. Another, another one? Book fairs, book fairs ada, bener. Pameran seninya, Erlangga Exibi. Apa? Ada fotografi, ada art, fotografi, art, kreatif, poetry, installation art, dokumen, sama installation art, sama video dokumen. Ya betul, Sulit, congratulations, Cie. Samaan, Cie. <laughs> Siapa yang mendapatkan topi hari ini? Angkat topinya. Yang belum dapat nanti kita bagi-bagiin lagi ya. Dan sekarang aku mau chit chat chit chat dulu nih dengan all the judges. teman-teman semua dan saya mau sahabat kembali teman-teman yang ada di YouTube maaf sekali kita nggak bisa bagi-bagi teman-teman yang ada di YouTube ya karena kalian jauh ya tapi thank you so much for all the support thank you so much yang udah ngedukung teman-teman semua yang ada di sini peserta di sini kalian keren banget tepuk tangan boleh buat teman-teman yang ada di YouTube mendukung kita dari jauh keren banget and now now I would like to ask and also ask to all the judges about okay about the Erlangga English Speech Contest 2023 what about what you think about the all participant from SMA and also SMK maybe from Miss Amber please you can stand up and say hi to everyone here hi good afternoon everyone how are you feeling <laughs> me too okay now, let me just start by saying a really big wow. Yeah, really big wow. I was so impressed by everyone here today. Today, we have seen influences of the future. Today, we have seen our future leaders. Today, we have all been inspired by an amazing group of young people. And I think that it's going to be very, very difficult. It was very, very difficult for us today. To, to select uh, and to choose and to, and to score between all the participants. Every single participant here today brought something amazing to the table. You made us all think about really, really important issues here today. So congratulations to you all. You are amazing. Give yourself a round of applause. Now, I know... I also know and I want to say that I know that such an amazing group of young people could not be so amazing without the support of some amazing parents. So let's give our parents a round of applause. <laughs> parents who have traveled with their, with, their, with their children from all across the archipelago in Indonesia. And let's not forget, I'm sure also that we had an amazing group of teachers standing behind these amazing students today. So let's give all of our teachers a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. From myself, it was a privilege for me to be able to be here today to listen to you all. And guys, you did an amazing job. Each of you are amazing. That's why you're in the final, and I want you to remember that, okay? And I look forward to reading about you in the future. I look forward to seeing you guys on social media and reading about you in the news, because I know I will. Okay? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Mrs. Amber! And now, please, Kak Naila Farhana, what do you think about our all the participants here from SMA, SMK. And now, please give applause to Kak Naila Farhana. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Hi. First of all, I want to say it was an amazing job from each and every one of you. I have to say, saying amazing is a bit of an understatement. 
I had a bit of a difficulty giving you guys scores because I was so tempted to just give 10 to all of you. But of course, I had to be fair. You know, and also, you guys really presented about something that are so important, so relevant, you know, like relevant to problems today. And I was very surprised to have listened to all of the topics that you brought up. So that was really good. And it was such an honor to have witnessed such talents today, you know. So, um, and also, I was really surprised at how coherent, how well-structured, and above all, your confidence today. So it was so, so, such an honor to be here. And um, you know what, I, just a little secret, when I was your age, I was not nearly as confident as any of you. So you guys are at a great place. And even if you didn't win today, please do not feel discouraged. Please keep participating in these kinds of events. Please keep challenging yourself because you guys are future change makers. So keep doing that, okay? So again, thank you so much for having me here. And it was an honor. It was an honor to have witnessed you all. Thank you so much, Kak Naila Farhana. And now, for the last judges, for the last judges, please welcome Mr. Lee Norman Smith. Mums, dads, thank you for joining them. You guys, you did continue to shine. You continued to amaze me in particular. I thought after watching the SD, and the SMP, I thought that was as good as it could get. The SMA and the SMK took it to a whole new level. Guys, and myself being a foreigner, somebody that's not from this land, but I've adopted Indonesia, I have fallen in love with this country. What I saw today has filled me with hope for the future that these young people we see today, they will be the future leaders. They will be the people that will take us into the next generation. They are the people that will look after us in our old age. Guys, the, the hope that is inside me, I have two little boys myself, and I know that this beautiful country is in safe hands. But what I need each and every one of you to promise me, the Arlanga speech competition is once a year. Don't treat it as once a year. Don't keep all of this knowledge that you have and all of these things that you have taken from your new friends, for people from Bakasi all the way to the very, very west, all the way to the very, very east. Take it back to school with you. Share it with your friends. Guys, don't stop contacting your other teammates. They are there to help you. Next year, maybe you'll see them again. And you'll say, last year, you came second, I came fourth. I'm going to beat you this year. And that's what we want, guys. Because you can only strive, as Naila said, you can only strive to be better than you were before. It's not about Bakasi versus Bali. Guys, people said we need to be diverse. This country will come together sooner than later with the leaders that all of you parents have produced. So you guys, thank you for the discipline, the honor, the loyalty and respect that you have put into your children. So from you guys to them, we all, myself, Amber, and Naila, you have given us a horrible job. You've, it, it is gonna be horrible. I'm sure there's going to be tears, but as I said in the very, very beginning, there can only be one first. Maybe it's just an off day. Maybe somebody had a beautiful day, but you are all winners. Guys, take that with you. You have all won a competition today. So thank you all very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Lee Norman Smith. Please give a applause once more to our judges. Thank you so much. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a closing remarks from the President Director Erlangga, Mr. Raja Manahara. Please give applause to Mr. Raja Manahara. Hello, how are you? Thank you very much uh, to the judges. Thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Mr. Lee, uh, Ibu, Ibu Amber, Ibu Naila, thank you very much. And especially for the finalists, the contestant finalists from all over across Indonesia. Amazing, so amazing. Amazing, I've seen the performances you guys gave. Uh, you guys are, really shows the future of Indonesia. And we are really proud of that. And we are really thankful that we are part of uh, the success that you have today. Uh, to the other finalists or the, idol, uh, the other contestants, uh, that, that are not here. They are all actually really good also. It's really, it was really hard. It was really hard for us, the judges. Uh, in, uh, I'm, I'm sure it's really hard also for you today. Or not? Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> uh, it was really hard also for us to pick which ones would represent uh, the branches. Uh, I was actually in a little bit... Uh, we had some communications with the bosses there, uh, but then we have you, and you are amazing, really amazing. Hopefully, hopefully next year we're gonna have uh, more contestants, and then hopefully the ones who are here right now can join. Boleh nggak? Boleh, Mbak Fikri. Mana Mbak Fikri? Boleh. Yang udah ikut hari ini boleh ikut lagi nggak tahun depan? Yes, the one who won today, you can uh, join again English Speech Contest 2024. <laughs> so, again, thank you very much for your participation, guys. Which ones are the high school uh, students? High school. Wow, kalian keren banget, keren banget. Thank you very much. Uh, yang SMP mana? Yang SMP keren banget. Yang SD mana? Yang SD mana? Keren banget. Ayo berdiri, 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 berdiri. Semua kontestan finalis mana? Coba berdiri semuanya. Yang cowoknya ada berapa? How many boys and how many girls? Just one, two, two boys. Oh, Oke. Okay. So all the girls will have to teach your friends ya, yeah? your friends. So you need, so your PR ya yeah? buat kamu semua, kamu harus ajarin bahasa Inggris ke semua teman-teman kamu. Bisa? Janji ya? Yeah? Sumpah pramuka ya? Yeah? Iya, yeah. yeah. siapa yang ikut pramuka? Ikut pramuka ya? Yeah? Oh, Oke okay, ya. Yeah. Uh, so jadi kamu, kamu kalian keren-keren banget. Bukan hanya kamu yang keren, tapi sekolahnya juga keren. And also yang keren juga adalah orang tuanya, ya. Mama, mama, mama mana mama? Mama, all the mamas. Wow, you've done amazing job. Tepuk tangan buat mama papa dari anak-anak ini di sini. Wow, keren banget. Thank you. And thank you very much parents for letting, for coming here and for letting the kids to come and join our event right here right here thank you very much silakan duduk semuanya ya uh, saya kira itu dari kami this english speech contest uh, has been postponed after corona time but now we've done it offline offline this is the first offline english speech contest after after 2021 yeah 2 3 years and apparently, you guys have shown amazing potential. And please, you have to study more. 
If you can, you can study other languages. Maybe you have uh, potential in learning other languages also. Learn Chinese language, Mandarin, Japanese, or learn French language. Why not? All right? So thank you very much again, uh, the juries, uh, the parents, the teachers, and also the schools. Thank you very much. Hope to see you soon again. If not next week, maybe next year. Thank you very much. God thank bless you. Thank you very much, Mr. Raja. Please bye bye. kindly stay on the stage, Mr. Thank you so much, Mr. Raja. Thank you so much, Mr. Raja Manahara. As a president director, please stay on the stage, please. Because we have a photo session now, and I would like to invite our director team, Ibu Fikri, Ibu Destriana, Bapak Arsal, Asrel, Bapak Dwi Sartata, and also all the judges, please. We have a photo session with Bapak Raja Manahara. Okay, photographer, please. Baik, look at the camera. One, two, three. Tom, one, two, three. Freestyle. E, E, Erlanga. One, two, one, two, three. Freestyle. One, two, three. Thank you so much. Please move. And uh, we can have the picture with all the participants here. Please move here in front of the participants and look at the stage. Please over here. Please, all the judges and all the team director to move here. Yes, and look at the stage. Baik, Bapak dan Ibu semuanya untuk turun sejenak. Kita berdiri tengah-tengah untuk seluruh di depan all participant dan juga Bapak dan Ibu. Kita foto bersama. And please stand up to the all participant and also mummies and also daddies and the teachers and all everyone here. We can take a picture together with all the judges and also the director team here. So, so give the perfect smile on the camera. So please, please, Mr. Lee. And also we have it. We need to picture take a picture together here. Baik, kita foto bersama terlebih dahulu, Mrs. Amber, Miss Naila. So all the director team, look at the stage. Okay, and the photographer on the stage and now and so, yes, everyone stand up. Semuanya berdiri, semuanya berdiri, semuanya berdiri. Kita sama-sama kita lihat ke kamera. Kita foto bareng dulu di sini. Very wonderful day here. Thank you so much. Semuanya kita baris dulu di depan, maju lagi, dekat-dekat dulu semuanya. Untuk bapak dan ibunya juga bisa merapat dulu ke depan, kita foto-foto bersama lagi. And look at the cameras here. Kelihatan semua? Okay. All the Erlanga team, please, everyone's our Erlanga teams. Erlanga teams. Kita ikutan foto yang masih di belakang. Kita ikutan foto dulu ke depan semuanya di sini. Silakan sayang maju ke depan lagi foto bareng. Okay, everyone. Semuanya udah siap. Yang di belakang kita berdiri semuanya. Sama-sama kita lihat kamera. In three, two. One, E, Erlangga. Freestyle, one, two. Victory, victory. Sarangeo. One, two, three. Freestyle, yeah.
Wait, have a tagline, Erlangga have a tagline. Please, Mr. Raja. P23, yes, 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 all right. We do it in a count of three, yeah? Okay, camera ready? All right, let's go. One, ready? Camera ready? Okay. One. English. Yes, yes, yes! Give applause to everyone. Very wonderful day. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to all of the participants and I would like to say thank you so much who, to all the participants who perform at National Grand Final of Erlangga English Speech Contest 2023. Level, level elementary school, junior high school and also vocation and I would like to say and I will have an announcement of the winners and prize delivery will be announced at the Erlangga Art Awards 2023. An awarding and closing event which will be held on Sunday, 13 August 2023 and tomorrow. And also I would like to say thank you to Sahabat Erlangga on YouTube channel. Thank you so much. And I would like to say thank you so much for all mommies, daddies here. And I would like to say also thank you so much to the Sahabat Erlangga everywhere there who always watch and support from the live YouTube and also final Erlangga English Speech Contest 2023. And I'm Ika Mutiara as a master of ceremony from the deepest my heart. I do apologize if I have mistaken in presenting this Erlangga English Speech Contest. And thank you for attention. See you next time. Dan jangan kemana-mana kita akan ada performance dari Iris Bevy. And see you next time.